What's up, everybody? Welcome back. What's going on? What's going on? Whew. We got everybody already in here. Wow. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Somebody got a stretch in before it even started. I got you. Hold on. I, I'll get you. I'll get the stretch in. I got you. Gonna get a little stretch in. A little stretch in. I'll do a bigger one once more folks get in here. Welcome back, everybody. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? Excited for day two. I'm excited for day two. All right. Uh, so we'll give folks a second or two to get in here. Uh, I typically always like to, to start with questions. So while folks are getting in here, we'll start with questions. But the question of the day, the question of the day, and I want you to answer it in chat is, would you rather win a bronze medal in the Olympics or have a recurring role in one season of a semi-popular Netflix show? So bronze medal or Netflix show? Go ahead and throw that in chat for me. <laughs> oh, this is pretty mixed. Some folks are, I, there's a lot of folks doing Netflix. There's a lot of folks doing the bronze medal. This is this is like perfectly balanced. All right, we got to figure out a bot for this. We got to figure out a bot to 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 see what people choose. I love it. It's a good mix. It's a good mix. Uh, I'm gonna go to uh, to little Leon mode, and we're gonna let some questions come in. Let the questions come in for a little bit. Give folks a minute or two to get in here, and then we're gonna get started. Lots of fun HTML stuff to get through today. Uh, excited to kind of have y'all learn some of the basics, some of the basic HTML tags, get to build in kind of the first time will take time uh, to actually build stuff today. So let me go to little Leon. Let me uh, let me bring up the question slide. And uh, if you got questions, go ahead and throw them in chat. Happy to answer some. Sir Peanut, I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Today's a good day. Uh, I'm doing well over here on the West Coast. Uh, hope everyone's being safe. I know the East Coast is getting hit uh, pretty hard right now. And so hope everyone's staying safe. Hope everyone has power. Uh, a lot of you folks reached out to me on Discord uh, before class. So hoping everything goes well and, and that you're able to attend. Boom. What do we need to read exactly for homework? It's in the uh, it's in the Discord. Everything that's there is what you need. Uh, if you're following along the Coursera course, you're going to uh, do everything. You don't have to do the optional stuff. You don't have to do any of the essays. If you're looking at the Shea How, you're reading the entire HTML CSS basic section. It's a lot. Remember, we don't have any class on Tuesday uh, and we won't have our next class until Thursday. So you have your 10 weeks outside of class for this week and you have your 10 weeks outside of class for next week. And so uh, it's plenty of time to get through all the reading. All right. Uh, beast. Yeah. The quote, the quote tweets will count for check-in. Uh, I might have to tweak some things on my end, but yeah, you're, you're all good. If you're doing quote, quote tweets, you should be fine. My back hurts. Is the Google form for homework submission up? No, it'll always open right before class, uh, on the day that stuff is due. So don't look for it ahead of time. Um, but on the day that it's due, it'll be open. <laughs> Booty liquor, <laughs> anky it up. Karma, hey, thank you for the sub. I appreciate that. Oh, Knox, you're you're getting uh, ash again. Yeah, there was one day when I went outside and it was just golden outside. the The entire sun was blocked out and ash was falling. Sorry for folks that are close to that. All right. <laughs> Can we get Ali Abdal as a guest during office hours? Yo, I would love it. All right, folks. If you got some questions, bring them on in. Uh, some folks said, hey, with the moving to remote, are we afraid of outsourcing? That's a great question. Hey, Cookie, thank you for the three gifted subs. I appreciate that. Uh, that was that's the interesting thing. Like I was looking at the subs once again for all the folks that are following along. 
I never expect you to sub. I never expect you to donate. That money doesn't even go to me. That's just a donation to the nonprofit I work at during the day. Um, but I looked at the subs and it was interesting. We had more gifted subs than personal subs. And I thought that was really cool. I think that's a, a testament to the community we're building. Uh, <laughs> what the hydrate already, Paloma. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers to you. I got my water on tap today. Nice and cold, ready to go. I'm not even going to put the cap on it. I'm going to live my life dangerously today. Leave the cap off. If I spill it all over my desk, that's my fault. But uh, there we go. So somebody asked a good question. I think we should we spend a few minutes talking about that question and then we're going to get started. A lot of HTML to cover today, folks. Uh, if you're if you're new here, welcome. Uh, we're running a 30 week boot camp. Uh, for those that are affected by the pandemic and folks that are looking for a new career or career change or career upgrade if, if, if they're if they're not satisfied where they're at right now and we're going to work through all the basics of full stack web development we talked last class a lot about uh, what the internet was how we can become front-end developers the things that we have to keep in mind so that uh, sorry become full stack web developers the things that we have to keep in mind to keep ourselves uh, safe and happy and, and pushing through the trough of sorrow over the next 30 weeks. And uh, we'll review a lot of that stuff uh, today in a few minutes. Shakira Greatness, thank you for the gifted sub. I appreciate that. Uh, when you sub, you get those little micro Leons, which are cool. You can use them in chat. You can use them when we do raids. Uh, and you can also unlock them with channel points. <laughs> Omar is happy. Thanks for the gifted sub. I appreciate that. Uh, so I want to get to that one question that we're going to start. Uh, if folks could outsource development jobs that they would, right? It's a big trend. A lot of a lot of freelancing or let's say you're building sites for someone else, right? You're not in-house, you're building something for someone else. A lot of those jobs were, were outsourced uh, around the world and we saw that kind of happen. But every kind of big company now is a tech company. They have some sort of in-house engineering team. So even though we're going remote, we're still seeing folks that have a hiring preference in the, the, the country where they're located. Uh, and so, yes, we're, we are seeing some some roles kind of leaving the country where the, the actual company operates. Um, but that's great because we have a lot of folks that are here all around the world. So let's let's gobble up some of those jobs. Um, but we're also seeing a lot of more growth, too. So these larger companies, these companies that are growing in the location where you live, they're typically having some sort of in-house team as well. So, yes, there have been some stuff that has kind of left local. Right. But the growth has been so much that the job demand is still really, really high. So. It's uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like both things are happening and it's benefiting everyone, which has been great to see. Like I said, there, there's a lot of worry right now about like um, a dip in tech hiring, and I just haven't seen it. In my day job, I help folks get jobs all the time and, and, and new careers in tech, and we have the most interest that we've ever had in the past four years right now. So, yeah. Oh wow, all these gifted subs. Thank you. Liquid Words, thank you for that gifted sub. Jay, thank you for the gifted sub. Appreciate that. Uh, once again, folks, let's get in here. Let's get comfortable. Got a lot of fun uh, HTML to go over today. Uh, and always, as always, folks, thank you for being here. I know you're, some of you are coming after a long day. I know some of you are connected to a hotspot right now because you lost power. Big respect. Let's put in some work today. You're going to get your fingers on the keyboard for the first time. Get you coding along. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. All right. Reptile, you're feeling none of the weather, but you're still here. Respect. Come on through. <laughs> Wu-Tang forever. All right, folks. Let's go ahead and... Uh, what? Anonymous viewer has gifted 10 subs. What? Stop it. Y'all are wilding right now. I appreciate it. whoever that was. I appreciate it. Welcome to all the new folks that can now use the the, the micro Leon. Can we get a can we just get a, a little wall of micro Leons in chat for me, please? If you, if you have the ability to use micro Leons, can, can you put them in chat? I just, I just want to see it. Can I just see I see a few of the micro Leons, all the new folks that got them. <laughs> there we go. I love it. Thank you. That's how that's how I want to start out the stream. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for the cheering. Who was that? I gotta be able to see this. Audacious, thank you for the for the for the bits. 
All right, folks, let's get into this. Let's talk about what we're going to go over today. Uh, so we're going to review quickly the client server model. I'm going to kill off the music here. We're going to talk about the client server model. We're going to dive deeper into the HTML tags. We sold just a little bit of HTML. We're going to talk through it. <laughs> Wolfgang, what's up? Thank you for the cheers. Uh, we're going to talk about the actual tags. We're going to see some of the most popular HTML tags. Like I said, as a, as a developer, as a front end web developer that's working on the client side code, maybe 30 tags that you use all the time. We'll see about 15 tonight. So you're kind of well on your way to being able to build whatever you want just with the little HTML that we're going to go over tonight. Uh, we're going to take some time to work on a lab. We're going to take a couple minutes for you to kind of start working through some HTML on your own. Then we're going to go over it together. We're going to learn about some newer tags. We're going to learn about a really important topic called progressive enhancement. And then I'm going to leave you with the lab for the rest of the evening, your homework to get started. And so lots of fun stuff, the basics of HTML. And uh, for folks that, are, that have been around for a little while, this is going to be some good review. But remember, the things that we're reviewing, we count that as spaced repetition. You're trying to lock down this, this information for the rest of your life. And so if you, if you, even if you feel good and comfortable with HTML, try and pull some vocabulary out. Try to, try to think of a new way to talk about these topics. How would you describe these things to a teammate or somebody else you're working with on your development team and treat it as uh, some lovely spaced repetition? Uh, I see some folks are playing bingo tonight. I see Kato is playing with the bingo. Uh, you can always do exclamation point bingo to, to play along. Um, all right. If you need the slides, exclamation point slides to get you the slides to follow along. As always, if you don't like the auto advancing, you can, you can chop off the slash live. Uh, if you need the materials for tonight, you can always join our Discord, exclamation point Discord. Once you agree to all the rules, you'll be able to download the materials for today. And we're going to get us started. All right, folks, buckle in. Let's do this. All right. So we talked through some questions at the beginning of class. Let's review some of the, the key stuff from last class just to kind of get it fresh in our minds uh, and to see if folks have any questions. All right. Think today, today got a little real. Think today got a little real. Uh, I shared out the work that's due, the homework. And so you're seeing two videos, a full Coursera course, a whole a lot of other reading. You're seeing uh, a whole website you have to build. And so uh, it, it might have got a little real for y'all. I, I said 10 hours of work outside of class. And now it's time to start putting in that work, right? Uh, you might be right here once you saw that wall of stuff that has that had to that you had to do, right? And so the idea here is that we only have so much time with each other every 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 class period. And so a lot of these things have to be reinforced and a lot of stuff you have to learn on your own. I'm not going to show you every single thing that you're going to need, but I'm going to provide the resources for you to get that information. The resources that I've seen work for a lot of my students in the past, the resources that I have seen work right now. I've done this for eight plus years, thousands of students. I've, I've, I've assigned some work that was some duds and I've assigned some work that were gems and you're getting straight gems with me these days. Okay. So if I assign it to you, it's not because I'm some masochist and I want to see you suffer. I'm assigning it because I know that it has helped a large portion of my students in the past. And I want that same thing for you. Okay. So. Manage your frustration, be consistent, and take care of yourself. Audacious, thank you for the gifted sub. Right? For some folks, when they see all the homework that got assigned, there might have been a switch. And it's okay if you had the switch flip where you're like, I can't do this. This is going to be too much. You, you, you might have had that switch that just that, that you saw that message come through. You're like, not today. You're, you're like, not today. That switch might have hit. Uh, I think who was that? Uh, we said a sub come through. I don't want to miss it. Uh, Campo, thank you for the gifted sub with uh, Prime. Um, you might that little that little switch might have might have happened, right? And so this is your first taste 
of managing that frustration, managing that little voice in your head that's telling you you can't do it, that it's too much work. Uh, and, and, and so like the other things that come up too, a lot of folks, when they first, when they first get back into learning mode, there's this idea of maybe I can't read, maybe I'm not good at math. Maybe I'm not X, Y, and Z. It's all bullshit. You can do it. I've had folks from all walk of life that take the time to manage their frustration, to be consistent and get to the other end. Ooh, with the hydrate. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate you. Cheers to you. Now, when you see that 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 homework that's due, right? When you see that homework that's due, you got to make a plan. You got to make a plan that's going to enable you to be consistent. Don't schedule. Hey, on Saturday, I'm going to grind through everything. We know that that's not an effective way to go about this amount of work that's due. You got to have some sort of consistency throughout the week, right? Not only to make it bearable for yourself so that you're taking care of yourself, but also because we know that spaced repetition is more effective than studying in mass, right? So even if you, even if you don't want to do it because of, of timing considerations, you should be doing it because of learning considerations. You know that if you space out your learning every day or in larger spans of time, instead of larger blocks of time, if you spread it out, you're going to learn more effectively. But also, it's about consistency. If you're scheduling massive blocks of time, right? If you're scheduling massive blocks of time, you're going to miss one of those blocks. And then when you miss it, what happens? You're going to be behind, right? You're going to be behind. So everyone, when you're done class today, if you haven't already, make a plan. What's your consistency plan? When are you studying? Put it on your calendar. Tell your loved ones, hey, I need a half an hour every morning. I'm going to wake up a half an hour early to get this half an hour studying in every morning. And I'm going to be focused, right? Let, let the folks around you know, right? right? Let the folks around you know, you called, but you called at the wrong time. I got my half an hour study to go, right? And then take care of yourself. Uh, when folks first kind of start the learning to code journey, they, the, 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 like one of the biggest things I see that's a mistake is they take too much on. Paloma, thank you. I appreciate the, the sub. They take too much on. They see all the stuff I assigned and they're like, I'm going to do more. I'm going to, I'm going to do way, way more ease into it. Folks, there's going to be time for you to grind it out. There's going to be time for you to push really hard. Start with the stuff I assigned ease into this week, ease into next week. Right. Right. And, and we'll, we'll turn up the heat. Don't worry. I'm going to turn up the heat. I'm going to push you. I promise you I'll push you. Right. But don't burn out in the beginning. We just started the race, right? We just started the race. Don't don't trip over the start line and fall down, right? Ease into it. Start with just the work that we have, right? The work that's assigned, and we'll slowly ramp up, right? Trust me, we're gonna have a lot of time to push. Don't trip out the gate, especially if you haven't studied hard in the in the recent future, like in the recent past. Sorry, in recent future, in the recent past, if you haven't been studying regularly. Don't come out the gate think you're going to be Superman. You're not. Give yourself some time to grow into it. <laughs> Thank you for the hydration. Appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Pastor Lord, I've never studied hard. All right. Well, now's the time. All right. Oh, I like that, Octoberus. Treat yourself like you would a good friend. Be gentle and forgive yourself. I like that. Yeah. Jonas, you'd force yourself to take a walk today? Dope. All right. There we go. All righty, folks. All right. Some of the big topics we talked about last class. If you're doing these two things while you're studying, you're in, you're in a good spot. Who actively recalled after class? When we were done class, we did the raid. Who actually did some active recall? Did anybody do some active recall after class? Sid did. I see you. Okay. Rui did it. 
<laughs> Doken did it. All right, we got a lot of people that did it. All right, that's what I'm talking about. If after class you participated in the raid and then stopped and didn't do anything else, I'm, I'm here to tell you, 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 you kind of messed up. You, you, you kind of messed up, right? Like if you just, if you just turned it off and that was it, you kind of messed up. It's all right. It's all right. We're here to learn, right? We're here to learn. <laughs> you ducked up, <laughs> right? So we know that today you're going to, you're going you're gonna to leave a little bit and we went over, right? We went over. I know that you blocked those three hours and if, if you didn't have the time, that's okay. I'm not, not I'm not coming at you and your, and your way you set up your life, right? I'm just saying that at the end of class, we know that an effective study method is active recall. And so if you're not actively recalling the stuff that we did over three hours together, you know that you're not going to retain that information, right? We can see in the graph, right? If you were to rewatch this four times, right, it would be less effective than if you just watched me once, right, joined us once, and then actively recalled all the things we just learned, right? So take take some time, right? Take some time. <laughs> Joster, the graphs don't lie. Take some time. Build in. Even if you only have 10 minutes, build in 10 minutes of active recall and push yourself during the active recall. Really push to... to to make it so that you can recall the things that we learned, right? We know that's going to be an effective study habit. So bake it into your, your time with us. All right. How do we active recall? Just test yourself. What did I just ask yourself? What did I learn? Right? What did I just learn? What did we just cover? Leon said something about separation of concerns. What was that? Leon said something about the most important content. What was that, All right? And so quiz yourself, ask yourself questions at the end. Uh, what I like to do is I take notes. Psych, I don't take notes, I take questions, All right? I take questions. So if I, if I was on the other side of the screen, as we're going through class, I would write down a question. What is active recall, All right? What is active recall? What is spaced repetition? And at the end of class, I would look through all my questions and I would quiz myself. All right, what is active recall? What is spaced repetition? What is, what is the most important element in HTML? What is, what is separation of concerns, right? I would just power through those questions, right? Power through those questions. And then if they're good questions, I see y'all in chat. If they're great questions, put them in the Anki, right? Put them into Anki so that you can, boom, reset the forgetting curve, All right? And then you need to build in some time every day for reviewing those Anki cards. Reset your forgetting curve. If you just watch class, right? If you just watch class, within three days, you will have forgotten 40%. Within seven days, you will have lost about 80% of the stuff we covered. Could you imagine you, you, you put in, you put in all this time to be here and then eight days later, you eight days later, you can't remember anything. What a waste. You know how to stop that though. If you were here last class, you know how to stop that. Use Anki, use a spaced repetition tool. Make sure the things that we covered, you're resurfacing every day, build it into your daily practice because there's no point of being here. Right. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be blunt with you. There's no point with you being here right now, watching me right now, if you're not going to do space repetition, you're going to forget it. And this is a career where you have to remember stuff. You got to be able to build bigger and bigger things based on the knowledge that you accumulate over time. Right. Roof snooze, you got it. Space repetition every day is better than doing larger chunks. The science is, is correct. Yeah, that's absolutely. All right. Let's keep pushing, folks. I know, I know I'm kind of like, I know I'm ranting a little bit here, but it's just, it's, I, I would hate for you to waste your time, 
right? Like, and the fact that this isn't taught, like the, the fact that this isn't the first page of every textbook you've ever read is a travesty. And so I don't want you to waste your time. I want you to get the most out of this. And I want you to remember this stuff for the rest of your career. And so we know the two things we can do is active recall and spaced repetition. Cool. If you, if you want to learn more, and you should want to learn more about this, the homework is to watch two of Ali Abdal's videos. He covers everything you need to know about active recall and all the stuff you need to know about space repetition and the science behind it, right? So it's important. Grizzly Gear, thank you for the gifted sub. I appreciate that. All right. Alrighty, folks. You send all the kids, uh, all the videos to your kids, Yobi. That's really cool. Yeah, I wish I like. I'm gonna spend some time with my nieces this weekend, uh, and uh, I know one of them is kind of having some trouble in school, and so we're gonna spend some time like talking about active recall and spatial repetition. So I'm gonna do that too. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. This should be taught. All right, let's keep pushing. All right, everyone, in chat, what's the internet? Somebody tell me what the internet is. A wire, yeah, I like it. A big truck, <laughs> muffins, tubes, wires. Oh, I like it, a cable, cat memes, a wire in the ocean, yeah. There we go. I love it, dominoes, <laughs> the cloud. Cool, yeah, the internet. As we talked about uh, last class, is a way of connecting two different kinds of devices. Uh, they're both types of computers, but it is the system, the infrastructure that can connect client side devices to servers. And the way this works is that our client side devices can make requests. Those requests go across the internet through those very real wires until they find themselves on a computer called a server. A server can hear those requests, figure out what you, what it, what, what you need and what you're looking for and what you want as a response, and then the server can respond with that information and that information can go all the way back to a client-side device. Cool. What, what does a front-end developer work on? Chat, what does a front-end developer work on? What does a front-end web developer work on? Client-side, yeah, I like that, client-side. The HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, the stuff that you see and interact with, exactly, right? So the, the, the front-end developers would focus on the things that get sent from the server that render on your device, right? So, so far we talked about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Those are all the things that would render on our client-side devices in a program called a browser, right? Cool. What would a back-end developer focus on? What would a back-end developer focus on? Yeah, all the stuff that runs server side. What are some what are some things that a, a backend developer might build though? Like what are what are, what kind of code are they writing? What are they doing? Yeah, it's running on the server. What are some things they might be doing? Oh, I saw an API like that. The code that listens for requests and generates responses. Nice. Uh, the code that might talk to a database. Nice. I like that. All the stuff that you don't see. Okay, yeah, I see you, Vesper. Like payment processing, stuff like that. Ooh, CRUD operations. Somebody's, somebody knows what they're talking about. All right, so we, can, we know that a front-end developer would work on stuff that runs on the client side, the HTML, the C, CSS, the JavaScript, the stuff that we interact with, right? And a back-end developer would work all this stuff that runs on the server, right? Talking about things like talking to a database, checking to see if you're logged in, processing credit card information, all that fun stuff. Cool. What does a full stack web developer do then? What's a full stack web developer do? <laughs> All caps, both. <laughs> 
Yeah, they do it all, right? They do both. And so what we're going to be doing throughout this course is learning both. We're going to start with the front end. And the reason we start with the front end is because it's, it's easier to see, right? You can build something and immediately see if it's working or not. Uh, it's a lot more tactile, a lot more visible. And so we're going to start with the front end. And then we're going to mosey on onto the back end. And then we're going to combine them, do them all together, right? So we're, we're on our path to becoming full stack web developers. But tonight, we're going to start with HTML, OK? All right. <laughs> My eight-year-old is impressed I'm following a streamer. Oh, I don't know if I call myself a streamer. I don't know what I call myself. Jeez. That's the first time I've heard that. <laughs> Coding Hustler, thank you for saving me with the hydrate. Cheers to you. <laughs> Diabolical, you're a streamer now. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's keep rolling, folks. So tonight we're going to focus on HTML. Remember, I, I like to make my jokes. My, If you checked on, on Twitter, what you should do, exclamation point check in if you haven't checked on, on Twitter yet. Uh, I, I, I added the hashtag Domino's Pizza because uh, I wanted you to actively recall the example I gave you. So we're going to talk about HTML. Let's talk about HTML and what it'd be used for, right? So the idea here is that uh, if we were to pretend that we were going to order Domino's Pizza, look, my, my fingers aren't touching the screen. We're going to pretend. If we were going to pretend, uh, <laughs> that's wild, Miss Turner. That's so wild. Wow. Okay. Mr. Turner said my five-year-old says Leon it says Leon is on. <laughs> Tell them I say hello. What's up, little Miss Turner? <laughs> uh, so we're going to pretend. We're going to pretend that we're going to order Domino's, right? So we type in Domino's.com. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to type in Domino's.com. And when we get to the page and we see content, we see that delicious pizza. We see that list of ingredients, that content, the things that we can see that's all powered by a technology called HTML. Now, the peppers are green, the pineapple is yellow, the ham is pink, that coloring, that styling, it looks good. That's all powered by CSS. And then what we said is the most amazing feat in modern technology is that you can drag the ingredients onto the pizza, right? That behavior, that interaction is powered by a technology called JavaScript. So you need all three of those powers combined to build the modern websites that you see, at least the front end, the stuff that we interact with on a daily basis. Cool. How are we feeling, folks? We're, we're getting into it. We're feeling good. You ready to, to, to do some HTML tonight? We're feeling good? All right. I love it. Let's do it. All right. So. Most important thing we're going to cover again this evening is separation of concerns, right? The idea that we're going to keep our HTML separate from our CSS, our CSS is going to be separate from our JavaScript. And so tonight when we're writing HTML, we're not going to care how it looks, right? Because we know that that's something separate, that's CSS, right? Now, why is this rule, this separation of concerns, so important? Why is this the golden rule? What does this give us or help us with? <laughs> that golden rule, baby. Yeah, organization, right? It's organization. If I am a new developer on your software engineering team and I get assigned something I have to do, we call them typically tickets. If I get assigned something I have to do, a ticket that says, go and make something green, where am I gonna go look, chat? If, so, if, I, have a, if I have a ticket assigned to me that says, go make something green, where am I gonna go? Yeah, CSS. Avatar, thank you for the posture check. Let me uh, straighten up here. All right, we're doing good. Shout out ConvertKit. Uh, they sent me a t-shirt that says, teach everything, you know, shout out convert kit. Uh, that's, that's who all the emails come from. <laughs> all right. If I was a new developer on your team and I wanted to add an extra blog post, like an extra couple paragraphs, 
where would I go to do that? Where would I add those extra couple of paragraphs? Yeah, we're going to go to HTML chat. Nice. And if I want it to, when I click, have something spin on the page, it'd be really annoying. But if I wanted something to spin when I click, where would I go? JavaScript. Boom. So by agreeing to this idea of separation of concerns, right, by adhering to this golden rule, you're, you're really serving two, two purposes. One, you're, you're being organized for yourself. You know where to go make changes. But when you're on a team, you and the rest of your team are going to buy into these types of, uh, of rules or best practices so that you don't step on each other's toes and you know where to go. So important, important rule. All righty. We saw briefly some of the, the HTML syntax that we're going to talk a lot about tonight. Now, we said that HTML and CSS and JavaScript are languages. We typically refer to HTML and CSS as markup languages. Uh, there's this completeness test that was talked about by Alan Turing. Uh, shout out House Turing. Uh, that, was that said, if you give a language an operation, and you get something back, you're probably dealing with a programming language, right? So the idea is if I give JavaScript two plus two, I'm gonna get four back, right? I'm gonna get four back. If I give HTML three plus three, nothing's really gonna happen. If I give CSS five plus five, not really gonna get anything back. Yeah, there's some like new weird calculate methods and things like that, but it, I'm not really gonna get, get a, a response back from that operation. So that makes HTML and CSS markup languages and JavaScript a fully featured programming language. All right, shout out House Hopper, I see y'all. Shout out House Hamilton. Spam your house, spam your house in chat for me. Let me see, let me see who's here. Let me see who's here. Let's see who who overpowers in chat. It's actually a pretty, it's a pretty good mix. Oh, it's a pretty good mix. All right, I see y'all, I see you touring, I see you Hopper, I see you Hamilton. Well done, well done. <laughs> it just doesn't stop. The rest, the rest of the night is just boom, spam of uh, your house. All right, we're good. I see y'all, you're in here. Good stuff, good stuff, good show. All right. So, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, all languages, <laughs> I started a war, oh no, uh, are all languages, right? And just like any language that you would know, right? Any language that you would have learned, there's gonna be spelling and grammar rules for that language, punctuation for that language. When we're talking about markup and programming languages, we call that syntax, right? So we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about the syntax of HTML. But it boils down to all of your content using tags, right? Most of your content is going to be wrapped in an opening tag and a closing tag, right? And so here we have a lovely opening tag, some content, and a closing tag. And most of the time, the only difference, right, will be that the closing tag has a forward slash, okay? There are also the ability for opening tags to have what we call attribute value pairs. We're not gonna really use too many attribute value pairs this week, but next week and when we get to CSS and we start talking about things like IDs and classes, we're gonna use a lot of them. But for right now, probably really the only attributes that we'll use are hrefs for links and source for images, okay? Most of the code that we'll write over the next couple of days will just be simple opening and closing tags. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk through. Now we have an idea of syntax that we should be expecting. Let's, let's talk through some HTML tags and the syntax that we will use. But before we dive into the syntax that we're gonna use, why should we follow any of these rules? Why should we follow this idea like of having to write HTML with opening and closing tags? Why should we follow all of these rules? Like why are these rules necessary? 
See standardization. <laughs> Chaos is like, so it works. <laughs> to avoid chaos, consistency, to be a team player. Yeah, these are all good, good, good rules, right? Uh, the idea here is that we should be thinking about three types of users, right? We should be thinking about general users, assisted device users, and web crawlers for when it comes to things like SEO, okay? If we do not use the correct HTML tags with the correct syntax, our content might not render correctly to our users, right? So that's why we should be invested in, in learning the appropriate tags and when to use them. The other user we should be thinking about are folks using an accessibility device. Uh, there are a wide range of accessibility devices, but let's use an example of somebody that might have a visual impairment. Somebody that will be using something like a screen reader to move through the content is going to need you to have used the appropriate semantic HTML tags so they know where to go and how to move through your content, okay? And then number three is if you ever wanna show up in the search engines, the search engines expect you to agree to the rules and format your content appropriately. In fact, Google's gonna look at certain tags to figure out what your site is about, okay? And then of course, so the HTML police don't barge into our house and, and, and catch us slipping, right? But so keep those three users in mind as we learn the HTML tags that are gonna be used the most and when and why we would use them. And remember, the when and why we would use them, we just give a new word to that called semantics. Like the semantic meaning of a tag is the why and when you would use it. Uh, SEO is search engine optimization. It's all the stuff that you do so that your content shows up when somebody Googles you. Yeah. Cool. All right, time for some tags. I have watched way too much of this on YouTube. Like way too much of this. My big butt would be huffing and puffing after two seconds of doing this. It's basically, this is like a live event that's real life tag, but they're all like parkour specialists. Uh, so when I was looking for like tags, it, yeah, this is, this is like extreme tag. This is competitive tag. And I love it. I've watched way too many. I went into a YouTube rabbit hole with this one. It's some good stuff, folks. I'll share. I'll share some good highlights on Discord. But uh, this, this, this was this was my jam for a couple of days. All right. So we're not talking about this type of tag. We're talking about HTML tags. All right. Hey, Leon, can you give an example for an Anki card that for the question, why follow the rules? I want to know what answer you would put on it. Why? So I, I would probably have an Anki card that says, like, why is HTML syntax important? And I would have on the other on the other side so that our general users can. So general users can see our content. Assistive devices can move through our content and search engines can uh, see our content as well. So I would kind of just do like a very quick highlight of the three answers. Your Anki cards don't have to be like short question, short answer. A lot of times my Anki cards are short question, very long answer that I need to like talk through and actively recall. And so don't be afraid to have like a, a significant answer on the other side of a card. All right, here are our heading elements, okay? The most important content on the page should be wrapped in an H1. So the content that describes the rest of the site should be wrapped in an H1, okay? So if the most important content should be wrapped in an H1, how many H1s should we have? If the most important content should be in an H1, how many should we have? chat one yeah that makes sense right like if if the h1 is the most important content there should only be one most important thing so there should be one now there's a slight caveat with html5 sections now have the ability to have their own h1s but you'll don't worry about that for right now for right now let's keep the idea that most important content should be the h1 so there really should only be one right there are some little differences that we're going to uncover as we move through our content don't get caught up on the nitpicking early on. 
try to understand the big concepts. And as we build and do more, you'll pick up all the little fine details. So yes, there really should only be one H1 per page. Is there some like weird edge case where you can technically have more? Yes. Don't worry about edge cases in the beginning. Like one of the biggest things that's my pet peeves is somebody's trying to understand the broad concept and somebody comes in and goes, well, actually, if you take into account this one random fact that I read on Stack Overflow this one time, right? No, you're here to learn big concepts. You'll have tons of time to nitpick down the line. So don't focus on super, super small details right now. Especially if this is your first time learning HTML, don't get caught up, right? Learn big concepts. You'll have your whole career to learn the nitpicks. All right. <laughs> Jay Watt said, that guy's everywhere in software engine. Yeah, they're, they're, they're everywhere. So just, just you're here, get big concepts, stick to that. All right. How many H2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, and 6s can we have? <laughs> Infinite. I like that, Sergio. All right? We have as many as we want. If we have a lot of content, we could have a lot of H2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, and 6s. Now, what differentiates a 2 from a 3, chat? What differentiates uh, an H2 from an H2? Remember, these are headings. These are things that describe the content that comes after it. Think like a newspaper. You have your headline and then the content that comes after it. Yeah, we differentiate between a two and a three by importance, okay? So remember, when we use these heading elements, they're gonna look different in the browser. Some are gonna be smaller and bigger than others. We don't care how they look. That will all come with CSS. When we are picking our heading elements, we're picking them based on importance, okay? Now, something that's really important about these heading elements is that they're really helpful for individuals using accessibility devices, like a screen reader. A screen reader can jump through your content by moving through your heading elements, right? So where somebody that without a visual impairment may have visual cues to move through a page, somebody using a screen reader is gonna use your heading elements to move through the page in the order of importance, right? So remember, we're, we're using these tags for a number of reasons. Also, when it comes to SEO, Google's gonna come to your site and they're probably gonna look at your H1, right? If that's the most important content on the page, of course, Google's gonna look at it to figure out what your site's about. All right. All right, some other tags that you're gonna use a lot in HTML. Paragraph tags, span tags, and pre-tags. When you think about paragraphs, think about big blocks of text. Sentences are more. When you're thinking about a span, think of short pieces of text, right? Paragraph, big block of text, span, short piece of text. That's kind of the only semantic difference. Pre-tag is an abomination, we shouldn't use them. Uh, what, with HTML5, we got these pre-tags. And what a pre-tag does is it introduces white space. So like any of like the entering or the character tones or spaces you do, that white space carries, right? This white space that carries over to the page. <laughs> Beably says gross. I love it. <laughs> why do you think I don't like this tag that like preserves white space and brings it over? Why 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 do, why do you think I don't like that? Yeah, four sharks got it. I think that's CSS's job. Right? That's CSS's job. Like CSS should be handling spacing and positioning and moving. And I I don't like that idea that there's HTML that can do that. And so that's why I say it's an abomination. You shouldn't use it. Now, let's talk about nerd fights. And I'll explain why, like, my opinion might not matter that much. Right? So I always like to tell this story. This is a true story. Nobody ever believes me when I tell this story. It's a true story. Uh, I have lost a friend over the BR tag. We were at a tech meetup. We were uh, we were drinking, eating some pizza, as you do at, at tech meetups. And uh, we started talking about the BR tag. I said the BR tag is an abomination. We shouldn't use it. BR tag puts a break, like spacing, like a line break, some spacing, right? HR puts a line across the page. We had some words. 
And uh, I haven't talked to this gentleman in, in three plus years. Now, was he right and I wrong or him wrong and I right? Not really. But were we both nerds at the end of the day? Yes. Right. We were both nerds at the end of the day. And, and this this comes to a really important point when you're first learning all of this stuff. If I give a website to 10 front end developers, I'm going to get 10 different versions of that code back. So one of the most important things you have to do early on is form strong opinions, but hold them weakly. So like have a good idea, like I'm going to use this HTML element because I know it's semantic meaning. Like the reason why I would use it is X, Y, and Z. But if somebody else on your team Right. If somebody else on your team can present a better argument for why a another tag might be more semantically relevant, then you let that go and you 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 follow their advice that is well reasoned. But early on, some of the best things you can do is formulate these opinions and have a strong idea why you're using the HTML that you're using. And if you're ever unsure of what tag you should be using, you should do some research. You should go to the MDN, the Mozilla Developers Network. You wanna go to the MDN because that's gonna give you the actual semantic reasoning behind each tag, okay? And so that's where you're gonna look a lot of this stuff up. So there are a lot of people that use pre-tags. I don't use them. There are a lot of people that use BR tags and HR tags. I don't use them. That's my strong opinion that I hold on to. If I was on a team where somebody presented an argument for why we should use them, I'd let it go. But my friend, when we're at a meetup and I'm a few drinks in, we're going to have some words if we start talking about some BR tags. So I did this last stream when I talked about this stuff and I'll do it again. We got way more people in chat now, so I'll do this again. My friend. If you're watching this, I apologize. I shouldn't have taken it as far as I did with the BR tag. Reach out, hit me up on Twitter. Let's talk. Let's hang out. I want to be friends again. I apologize. Cool. All right. So hopefully, hopefully he sees this. I doubt he'll see this. Hates my guts probably. But if he does, miss you, man. All right. Let's keep going. Here are two tags that can cause a lot of confusion early on, and so I want to I want to spend some time talking about them, uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna get to the point where we're gonna put our hands on the keyboard. All right, so stay with me for a few more tags. We'll take our top of the hour break, and when we come back, we're gonna get our hands to type in and actually coding this out. Okay, so. These tags, the M and strong tags, at first can seem a little confusing because when I wrap text in an M tag, it comes back italicized. When I wrap text in strong tags, it comes back bolded. So if I'm using M and strong tags, did I violate separation of concerns? Chat. Some are saying yes, some are saying no, you're both right. Here's why you're both right. If you use the M and strong tags because you like the way it made your content look in the browser, you done messed up, right? We never choose HTML tags based on how they're going to look in the browser, right? So if you chose it because you like the way it looked, you messed up. But if you chose those tags because you understand how it helps folks using accessibility devices like screen readers, you were right. If you come to a website and you can see something that says, warning, do not log in, right? That's something very visual. That warning can be bolded. It can be... um, it can be red. It can have all these things that it's going to draw our eyes to it. 
uh, the don't log in is a statement that, that you really want to have a strong amount of importance behind. So you make it big, you, you make it have all this styling that makes it stand out, right? But if you're coming to a website and you have a visual impairment that doesn't enable you to see that content, how do you know that there's a warning and not to log in, right? And so this M tag and this strong tag will give cues to a screen reader that makes the user pay attention. The emphasis in the strong tag will actually sound different. It will provide emphasis and show importance to that content. And so these M and strong tags are really important when it comes to accessibility. We're gonna have a whole class on accessibility. You can spend a, a large portion of your career focusing on these things, it's really important. A large portion of your customers and users of the internet are using some sort of accessibility device. And so there's like the moral, like you should be doing this because you're a good person reason. And there's also the, like, the greedy reason where if you're not doing these things, you're missing out on a large customer base. All right, important, keep that in mind. <laughs> Diabolical says us good people. <laughs> oh, did I miss a hydrate? I went by fast. I didn't miss a hydrate, did I? No. All right. <laughs> yes. Video. You were knighted. You were knighted. Right? You were knighted. You have to go out and do good. Right? You have to go out and do good. You gotta remember this stuff. All right, this, this kind of confused some folks. Um, and let's spend a little time to hopefully get some folks unconfused. Mac with the hydrate, cheers to you. Thank you. Tone with the hydrate, cheers to you. All righty, thank you for the double hydration. Okay. <laughs> Finally, he drank water. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, God damn. I keep forgetting about bingo. I tell you to play bingo at the beginning of the stream, and I forget about it. I'm just, like, confused by some of the messages. And people are just like, yeah, he did, he did something. And I'm like, why are you so happy that I did something? And then I <laughs> remember bingo. Uh, it's quite funny to me. <laughs> Estimation point bingo in chat if you uh, want to play along with bingo. All right. Ordered lists are for content that is in a particular order and it has to be or you would get in trouble. I really like to think of recipes as something that should always be in an ordered list. If you don't put the ingredients in the bowl before you mix them, you're going to have a bad time. If you put the, the, the mix into the oven, take it out, and then put the eggs in, you're going to have a bad time. Things like directions for making food, like a recipe, that should always be in an ordered list. It's very important that that content be in an ordered list. If <laughs> kids these days said bingo option, Leon forgets about bingo. Yes, diabolical. <laughs> Cross, please add that. <laughs> uh, if you have a list that doesn't demand being in order, that's an unordered list. So think of things like a grocery list. It doesn't matter that you put the mayo before the pickles, right? It, it doesn't, to me, that might matter. Pickles always come first, right? It doesn't matter if you uh, put one before the other in a grocery list. like. The, the HTML police aren't kicking down your door because you, you mixed up your, your, your groceries on a list, right? And so to me, a grocery list is something that doesn't need to be in order, so that's an unordered list, right? Cool. So ordered list has to be in a specific order. Unordered list, doesn't matter. Pete is, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, here are some of the last big ones we have to learn before we take our break. And then when we come back from break, fingers are going to get on these keyboards, folks. We're going to start coding some stuff out here. All right. Containing elements. 
Containing elements are a big part of writing our HTML. We want to be able to group our content together. With HTML5, divs kind of lost their logical reason to be used. Not that we won't ever use divs, not that I have a personal vendetta against divs. It's just that we got a lot of other tags that have a more semantic reason to be chosen over a div, right? So yes, you will see them in the wild every once in a while, but there are often just way better options now that we have all these new tags with HTML5. And so you're seeing divs kind of slowly disappear. If you're doing a tutorial that's not React and there's divs everywhere, you might wanna take a pause on that, that tutorial and think through, wait a minute, are there more semantic options for the content that they are wrapping everything in divs with? And so take a pause. All right. With HTML5, we got some really great containing elements. Sections are pretty self-explanatory. They help section off like content. I like to think about uh, <laughs> liver frosted treats. To me, liver frosted treats don't sound too great. But if they were grouped in with other content that was talking about dog treats, then that makes sense. So you could section off content that's similar to each other. An article is for containing content that can literally be shared. Think a blog post, uh, a newspaper article, things that you could share and it would still make sense. Like if I took the blog post off of the blog, hopefully it still makes sense and that's a good candidate for an article. If you're on a newspaper website and you can literally take a screenshot of that article and share it and it still makes sense, that's a good candidate for an article tag, okay? Before section and articles, everything was wrapped in divs, no matter what, it was just a div. Now we got some more semantic options. Another more semantic option is an aside. If you read the MDN, the aside is for ancillary or extra content. Stuff that if you removed it from the page order of the page, everything still makes sense and the website still functions okay. What are some things that you could remove from a website and everything should still operate the same? What would be a good candidate to wrap in an aside tag? Ooh, I think Kat got it first. Or maybe uh, Gupta did. Yeah, ads. Ads are good candidates, right? Ads are good candidates for the first thing that you could remove, right? Like if you removed ads, the site should still work. The aside originally came from sidebars. Sidebars were really popular in the web for a while. And I think when HTML5 rolled around, they wanted an answer for a sidebar. Like you could remove the sidebar and it would still make sense. So good candidates for an aside are sidebars and ads. Headers and footers. Header is for content at the beginning of a document. Footer is for content at the end of a document. Notice I didn't say top or bottom um, because that gets into like positioning and style. Uh, and an interesting thing is that articles can also have their own headers and footers. So lots of new tags that give us some more semantically appropriate options when it comes time to write our HTML. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's take a break. And then when we come back from our break, we're going to look at some sites and see where these tags go. Okay, so let's go ahead and put five minutes on the clock. Five minutes on the clock. Go ahead and take a five minute break. Do what you got to do, folks. Take what you do, what you got to do. <laughs> Root beer, thank you for the, the hydrate. Cheers to you. I'm going to put on some tunes. I need you to get up. I need you to stretch. I need you to take care of yourself. This is a marathon, not a sprint gonna put on some tunes uh, I, I like to answer questions during this time right but uh, please get up please hydrate do what you got to do use the restroom talk to your loved ones take this time away from the screen come back when you're ready all right I'm gonna kind of stretch a little bit too Move around a little bit. Ooh. 
Memphis, we're going to talk about nav tags later t later this evening. Yeah. Do you have a playlist of chill music like this for the background noise? Uh, I listen to Chilled Cow on YouTube when I want to listen to like lo-fi hip hop stuff. Uh, so Chilled Cow is just typically what I have on when I'm when I'm studying and working. Uh, Crusher Bait, it was the MDN, the Mozilla Developers Network. Yeah. Uh, the name of the music is in all of my YouTube videos because <laughs> I have to give credit to them. So, um, well, not that I have to, but I want to give credit to them as well. Um, so I actually don't know it off the top of my head, but it's at the bottom of every YouTube video. <laughs> Chill Cow is the jams. Yeah, I agree. Mine said, how do I go about redeeming a customized learning plan? I actually took it off of the um, the channel points for right now, uh, just because this the course is so demanding right now, and I want folks to pay attention to the course, and so kind of I kind of took it away. Uh, mine, I'm happy to kind of grandfather you in though. Uh, you've been around for a while, so if you want that, reach out to me on a DM. Code Monkey said, what editor should I use? Adam, which my teacher uses, or VS Code, which everybody else uses? It's personal preference. If you like VS Code, use VS Code. I like Adam, so I use Adam. Um, I, I, I think the, the reasons why one over the other are, are, are just a matter of personal preference. Yeah. <laughs> Tank Top Tiger said, do you like ketchup? Yeah, I like ketchup. I put a lot of pepper on my ketchup, though. I guess that's something weird I do. Boom. All right. What's happening with the MDN? Is it going to start getting outdated? Last avatar, yeah, the whole team behind the MDN got let go from Mozilla. So I'm not really sure. Uh, I hope a good open source community rallies around it. Um, but we'll, 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 be, we'll be left to see. Snacking on some shiitake mushroom crisps from Costco. That's pretty cool, Cross. <laughs> Zongu said, why is your hair like Jon Snow? <laughs> Genetics. Oh, uh, some brown boy. Did you ever try popcorn jalapeno combo like I told you about? No, but I will this weekend. I know I'm going to have to do a lot of snacking on Halloween, so I'm definitely going to make sure that's in the mix. All right. Do we need any specific software for the sec second section of the live other than Adam? Just Adam in a, in a browser. I, I recommend C Chrome and Firefox. A deal. Hey, thank you for the sub. I appreciate that. Are you doing anything fun for Halloween? Yeah, I'm hanging out. Uh, I'm doing a scavenger hunt for all my nieces, for my nieces. Um, since they're not going door to door, I'm going to hide candy everywhere and, and have them. We're all going to dress up and go and find all the candy. Drinking that strawberry chai smoothie from Trader Joe's. That sounds delicious. I got to try that out. Chris, you're doing a scavenger hunt too? Yeah, I think that'd be fun. Um, I'm, I'm really excited for it. That's why there's no <laughs> there's no office hours on Saturday. I gotta prep all that stuff, so that'd be fun. Does VS Code need a specific setup for full stack? Not really. No. Pasta Lord, you figured out Anki? Yeah, it's kind of confusing at first. I watched a couple of YouTube videos. Um, I just found some YouTube videos I liked, and I, I kind of just used the defaults though. I don't really, I haven't really optimized it i've installed a few plugins to to make it easier to create some cards but not really anything too wild all right folks come on back come on back come on back we got some we got some html to do folks hope you got some water in hope you got a stretch all right Welcome back, everyone. Glad to have you. Hope you're able to get around, move a little bit, shake it out. All right. We are going to look at some of the HTML in action, and then we're going to do a lab. We're going to take about 10 minutes for a lab. Uh, 
and then we'll get going. <laughs> Mama, welcome back. Glad to have you back. All right. Let's look at some websites, folks. Let's look at this. Let's do this. Welcome back. Come on back. All right. So we're going to look at some websites. Um, let's look at Khan Academy's website. I really like their website. All right. What is the H1 on this website? What is the H1 on this website? What do you think is the H1 here, chat? What do you think is the H1? Yeah. It's actually pretty interesting. It could be a few things here, right? Like, I think for every student seems like a good fit. Some folks are saying the Khan Academy at the logo could be a good fit. Uh, why might for every student, every classroom, real results be the H1? Why might that be the H1? Why might for every student, every classroom, real results be the H1? Oh, no, it's not because it's big. It's not because it's bold. That's all CSS. Big and bold is CSS. It would be the H1 because it's the most important. <laughs> Size does not matter, right? It would be the H1 because it's the most important content on the page. So that's why it'd be a good candidate for an H1. It could be an H1 and be super small. Who cares, right? You would do that with CSS. So remember, when you're choosing your H1s, you're choosing them based off of importance, right? We don't care what it looks like until we get to CSS. All right. Now, here's an interesting thing, though. The for every student, every classroom, real results could be the H1. Khan Academy could also be a good fit for the H1. That might be the most important thing. Like, if you're a newer company or your brand is something you're really trying to push, it could be an H1. Now... Here is why I think front-end web development is really fun. I think front-end web development is really fun because you get to work with a lot of people. You get to work with the back-end engineers that are sending the information to you. You get to work with the designers that you take their designs and you build it. You get to work with user experience professionals that are focused on how folks interact with the site. You get to work with marketing. Marketing might have the final say in saying, you know what? Make for every student, every classroom an H1, right? And so the idea here is that like as a front end developer, you kind of, you're kind of mixing around with a lot of folks and that can be fun and engaging. Uh, and so the idea here is that you might not as the developer have the final say in what gets to be the H1. Somebody else might be depicting that because we know the benefits when it comes to SEO and fun things like that. Cool. <laughs> Marketing has too much power. <laughs> All right. If we were looking at this portion here at the beginning of our document, like this whole area up here, what would that be, chat? What could that be? Yeah. Well, we're seeing header, so it could definitely be the header. And then some folks kind of jumped the gun. I don't know if you, you've been here for a while or if you uh, looked ahead in the slides. It's definitely a header, and inside that header, yeah, you would pre you see the nav, and we'll get to what the nav and nav bar is in a little bit. But yeah, it'd be a header with a nav inside of it. Cool. I think we're kind of agreeing that this might be the H1. What would this be, chat? What would that be? <laughs> I did not cheat. <laughs> I didn't say you cheated. I just say you might have you might have had some prior knowledge. I think it's a paragraph, right? It's a it's a block of text. Uh, it could be, you, it could be a heading if you felt like it described the stuff that came after. Um, I th I feel like we could be a paragraph here. Um, my kind of rule between like a paragraph and a span is that once you hit a sentence, that's kind of where I start thinking about paragraphs. Anything less than a sentence, that's where I think about spans. Go, sir. And Ruski with the hydrate, double hydrate. Cheers to both of you. Thank you. I'm going to take two sips. Cool. Uh, how about this over here? What would this be? What could that be? Oh, it moved. That's cool. Yeah, it could be an image. And since it's moving, what else might we have at play here? What else might we have at play here? 
Yeah, chat, I'm seeing it could be two things, right? It could be JavaScript, right? JavaScript could be um, triggering that rotation. But you know what? It could also be a GIF. But the reason why I think it, it might be more than just a GIF is because it's responding to my behavior, right? As soon as, as, soon as it's responding to my behavior, uh, I know there might be some JavaScript at play that's like listening for that behavior, that interaction, right? So it could be a lot. It could be some sort of image. An image can be a PNG, a JPG, an SVG. We'll get to that more later on. Um, but maybe some sort of image, and there's probably some JavaScript, uh, JavaScript afoot here. Um, how about how about this gray area? This gray area. What would this whole gray area be, Chat? What is an SVG? An SVG is a scalable vector graphic. It's kind of like an image that doesn't lose quality as it gets bigger or smaller. Yeah, a section. That's definitely a section. And then if we're inside of a section, what is, how, how about why Khan Academy works? What would that be? Why Khan Academy works? Yeah, that's an H2, right? It's definitely describing the content that comes after. It's less important than the H1. So I'm gonna go with an H2 here, right? If that's an H2, what are these? What would those be? The things that we circled. Yeah, H3, right? It's less important than why Khan Academy works, but each of those are definitely describing the content that comes after it, right? It's definitely describing the content that comes in those blocks of text, right? And what would these blocks of text be, chat? What would those blocks of text be? Link got it first. Yeah, paragraphs. Nice, paragraphs. And uh, we kind of just talked about it, but we know that these could be what? These would be what, chat? Those would be images. Nice. Blink, you're fast today, man. All right, or lady. All righty, folks. Let's keep pushing. Let's keep, let's keep scrolling. What about... Khan Academy boosts student learning. What could that be? I, yeah, I like that. I'm feeling another H2 here, right? I definitely think that um, why Khan Academy works and Khan Academy boosts student learning, those seem like on the same level uh, of importance as each other, right? So. You don't go, you don't have to go one, two, three, four, right? We're saying that both of those are of equal importance. So they're going to both be H2s, right? Right? They're both in their own sections, right? This is in its own section. Whoop. This gray box was its own section, right? but they're both different headings, but they're both of the same kind of importance. We'd probably see like another paragraph, another image. This could be a link of some sort or a button, which we haven't talked about yet. Then we have something here. I'm finally able to truly differentiate my classroom. This has been priceless for my students' engagement. What are you all feeling for this one? Ooh, we're kind of split on this one. Some folks are saying another H2. I've seen a lot of H3s. I don't know. I, I, I'm I feeling H3 here. I think it's definitely, it might be less important than the other ones. I could see an argument for an H2. I could see, I can see, I can see the, like we have three kind of sections that are kind of similar. They all have H2s. They might all be of equal importance. Um, but this is where you start to make your stand, right? This is where you start to say, Leon, I understand the semantic meaning behind the tags I'm choosing, and I feel like it's an H2, or I feel like it's an H3. HTML police aren't going to kick down your door, right? Make your decision, hold to it. 
And when we get to accessibility, we're going to we're going to address some of these again. We'll, we'll come back to these ideas of H2s versus H3s because there's also some accessibility concerns to bring in. Well, that's a good question. What would teachers be? Chat, what are you feeling like teachers should be? Oh, geez, whiz. Scroll. Whoop. I actually don't like how this stuff flies in. It's kind of hard to find stuff. All right, there we go. I'm seeing some spans. I think it could be a span. I think that's fair. Does teachers describe the content that comes after? Is teachers describing the stuff that comes after? Because if, if it's describing the content that comes after, it has to be a heading. Right? So if you think teachers describes the content that comes after, it's a heading. Maybe an H4. If you don't think teachers describes anything that comes after, it's just some text, then it's a span. Leon, why are you not telling us exactly what it is? Because I want you to form your own opinion, All right? You're at the point now where you know enough, you can make your own opinions, you're gonna hold to them strongly, you're gonna lose some friends at tech meetups, All right? And you're gonna read the MDN to inform your decision making. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving folks, let's keep moving. Now, we're gonna start working on this and I'm gonna share my thoughts and opinions. I'm gonna share my solution. So you're gonna be able to see some code, compare it to my code, that's gonna be a thing. But you gotta, we gotta start early folks. We gotta start with this idea that you're your own developer. You're newly knighted as a developer of the web. You gotta start thinking like a developer. You gotta hold yourself to being a developer. Your opinions matter, and you gotta start formulating them today. All right? <laughs> Memphis says, go to developer tools, Leon. We can, we, can, we can see the answers. You can, but what if, what if they were bad developers? What if they were bad developers? They chose the wrong tags. <laughs> What kind of name is that? Rickety, <laughs> rickety hips. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. <laughs> what? Why is that so funny to me? I don't know. Hips don't lie, right, Diz? <laughs> some of y'all names are wild. Like some of y'all, like you don't even like. I just see them going by, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> Joster, I trust the Khan Academy does with my life. I feel I feel in the same camp. I feel in the same camp as you. <laughs> Rickety hips and booty liquor. Uh, if we ever drop a mixtape, chat, if we ever drop a mixtape, like if we drop the Learn with Leon mixtape, the 100 devs mixtape, it's definitely called Rickety Hips and Booty Liquor. Um, that's it. It's right there. We got it. Sc hold on. Screen screenshot. Boom. That's the cover. Rickety hips and booty liquor. I love it. <laughs> Those are the singles. <laughs> we got to get Dylon on the track. All right. Now, we saw some tags that we've that we we're going to use. Let's talk about some tags that we're not going to use. Um, one of my first websites was a Harry Potter, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z fan page, and it was lit. I had Pikachu running across the top. Uh, there was like. There is somebody like going insane on there. There's it, there is there is all this stuff that like we just can't do on <laughs> we just don't do on the web anymore. And it was all made by using these elements that are now what we call deprecated. Um, there was this there is a survey that went out, and if you know the answers, don't 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 spam them in chat if you already know because you might you've heard this probably before. There is a survey that went out, and it asked. Software engineers, where did they get their start? Anybody want to guess? If you know it, don't don't answer. Anybody want to guess where the number one place software engineers got their start was? The number one. Yeah, a lot of folks got it. Neopets. Neopets was the number one answer where software engineers got their start. Uh, Neopets, if you don't remember, it was kind of like 
you would take care of these pets and you could play games and you could have your own store. You could have your own pet page. And uh, if you had your own store or pet page, you could like write HTML to look, make it look cool. And you would use all this HTML that made it look good, right? Uh, you would use bold B tags and I tags. Uh, the number two answer was MySpace. And of course, on MySpace, you would write some HTML to make things look good and, and add stuff, add music and things like that. So most software engineers that answered that survey got their start either on Neopets or MySpace. And the sad thing is that a lot of those tags that we use are just not used anymore. Why do you think that we don't use blink tags and marquee tags and B tags and I tags in those contexts anymore? Why don't why don't we really use those anymore? Yeah, diabolical. Yeah, spliff. Yeah. We got CSS. All that styling. That should all be handled via CSS. Right. So we don't really use those tags anymore and they've been officially deprecated. I say kind of for being I tags because the tags been co-opted for another semantic meaning. But the original purpose of like bolding and italicizing is no longer used. And a lot of the tags that were like JavaScript, like marquee, like moving, those are completely deprecated and gone. So unfortunately, uh, Tom's legacy in terms of HTML is, is, is no longer with us. All righty, folks. It's time to uh, get your fingers a moving. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on a lab in the starter materials. Leon, do you know Tom? I don't know Tom. I just know Tom is living his best life. He likes to roast people on Twitter. He sold he sold MySpace for like, what, half a billion dollars. And now just travels around the world taking photos, like living his best self. Shout out to Tom. Shout out to Tom. <laughs> uh, so we're going to start coding. Uh, if you need the starter materials, go ahead and do exclamation discord and chat. Join our discord community, agree to the rules, and you will see a follow along materials channel. Uh, in that channel, you will have a zip file that you can download. That zip file will have the starter code that you need today for this lab. So go to discord, grab the materials if you need them. If you're following along, or you're new, go ahead and give the stream a follow while you're here. Nice to have you. Uh, join our Discord, get the materials, and then come on back. So I'm going to give everybody a second to grab uh, the materials real quick. I'm going to open up the file that we're going to use, which is the Brownies HTML file. I have it open here in my text editor. So go ahead and open up that file in the text editor of your choice whether that's VS code, Atom, whatever. I use Atom. Um, open up this file in the editor of your choice. Now, if you don't know how to open up the file, let's talk about that. There's a couple ways you can open this HTML file in your text editor. You could drag the file to the text editor icon. You could open up your text editor and do file open, and then that file should open in your text editor. And if uh, for whatever reason you can't get it open, you should definitely stop by some office hours or ask for help in the general ch in the help channels on uh, Discord. We have plenty of folks that would help you kind of get up to speed and, and getting more comfortable uh, with your computer. So we're going to go ahead and open this HTML file. Make sure you have unzipped the zip file. In Windows, you're going to right click uh, unzip or uncompress. On Macs, you can just double click on it and it'll, it'll, it'll open up. On GNU Linux, you, you might have to right click and do the same thing. Make sure you've unzipped it and then make sure you open that file in your text editor of choice. All right. So if you're using a text editor, here's something I really recommend you don't do out the jump. A lot of folks use plugins and tools that make their lives easier. Don't use them for the first couple of weeks. Don't use Live Reload. Don't use auto indenters. Don't use something that makes your code prettier. Don't do anything that makes your life easier for the first two to three weeks. If you've been coding for a while, uh, you, can, you can ignore this advice. But if you're new, 
and somebody's recommending you do like this extra plugins and stuff, don't do it. Here's why I recommend folks don't do it. You got to get comfortable with the basics. I have had somebody that knew how to code that has come into an interview, but did not have their setup. And they kind of crumbled with like opening files and remembering to save and remembering to refresh the browser. And so like, there's no way they're getting past that interview if they can't do these very, very basic things. So if you're new, please learn how to do it manually first, right? Please remember to do it manually first. And then in two weeks from now, add all, you can add every plugin in Tarnation, go wild, do whatever you want. But in the beginning, please learn how to do it manually. <laughs> Code Monkeys opens Emacs. I love it. All right. If you're using Atom, you're going to need one. <laughs> I was like, don't use plugins. Uh, you're going to need one plugin. <laughs> you're going to need one plugin. Uh, you can always open the file in your text editor. And then if you want to open the file in your browser, you can drag that same file to the browser. Or you can go to your browser, let's say it's Chrome, and do Chrome file open, and then open that HTML file, okay? If you want the ability to do this, right click, open in browser, there's one plugin I recommend, okay? Oh wait, why did that? Boom, all right, there we go. If you wanna be able to have it open automatically, there's something called open in browser. I'm gonna show you how you install it. Command, comma, or control, comma. Install. And then search for open in browser. I like this third one by Magical Man to flow. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate you. And it has like 300,000 downloads. Just click install. And then you will have that lovely right click open in browser. Don't worry about it for right now. I'll share a video in our Discord on how to do it more. Um, if you're in VS Code, you should have this kind of plugged in. Deal. Thank you for the hydrate. Cheers to you. 700 days. If you're in a Chromebook, yeah, use something like CodePen today. I think that'd be helpful. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and look at this text. What we want to do is all this text, all this content needs to be wrapped in the semantically appropriate tags. Okay. So we learned all these different tags in the slides. So keep the slides open, keep the MDN or the Mozilla developers network open. And what I want you to do is I want you to move through this content and wrap everything in a tag. Okay. So when I go ahead and I look at this, I see deep dish brownies, right? I see deep dish brownies is the most, I'm gonna say it's the most important thing on the page, right? And since it's the most important thing on the page chat, what tag should I wrap deep dish brownies in? Sans, nice. H1, I love it, I love it, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do my H1 that opens and I'm gonna close my H1 around it. Boom, I have done my first, my first bit of code. Right now, this is not saved. Right now, this is not saved. How can I tell that my code is not saved? Anybody know in chat? Yeah, there is this little blue dot. This little blue dot at the top here. That's how I know my file is not saved. If I was to make changes and not save them, when I go to open this file in the browser, I won't see any of my changes. One of the most common mistakes folks make, right? <laughs> One of the most common mistakes folks make is they forget to save stuff. 
So you can always take that quick check to see if things are saved or not. All right. What I want you all to do is we're going to put, let's put, let's put, what are we feeling? Let's, let's put eight minutes on the clock. You're going to put eight minutes on the clock and you're going to work through wrapping all of this content in the appropriate semantic HTML tags, like the tags they should be. You're going to make decisions. You're going to stick to those decisions and you're going to work through it. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I just read Knox's message. I did. Uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking about that now. All right. Go ahead. I'm going to put eight minutes on the clock. I'm going to go ahead and put eight minutes on the clock. Work as fast as you can, but don't worry. We're going to go over it all together. So, I'm going to do eight minutes. I'm going to put that on the clock. I'm going to play some, some nice tunes in the background for us. I'm going to keep talking. All right? Ignore me. I am not saying anything important for you to pay attention to. I'm just making sure there's no dead air. Uh, and so go ahead, start working, ignore me. If you have questions, feel free to ask questions and I will answer them while you are working. But no need to pay attention to me for these eight minutes. Do you work through as fast as you can? And then after eight minutes, we're going to go over it together. Okay. I'm going to play the music. Zabby, a good web editor would be CodePen for today. CodePen.io. Ah, uh, Knox, I think they are a list. Yes. Magic Marco said, "How do you skip to the end of the line of code to do the closing tag on a Mac? It's Command and the arrow, which way you want to go. Uh, on Windows, I believe it's." the uh, start and end key or the page up, page down key. It's different on kind of each operating system. Um, Mama, make sure you're not hitting tab or anything that would automatically make it auto complete. You should be able to just type the opening and not have it do it, you know. Is there a trick to highlight a line and create an opening closing tag at once? Uh, there are, there are, and depends on your text editor and the plugins you have, but there should be a way, whatever editor you're using, you could Google that. But for now, type it everything out, type everything out by hand. Don't, don't try to use shortcuts right now. How do you select all the lines in the text editor to make changes to all the lines at once? On Mac, you just hold down command on PC and GNU Linux. You hold down control while you click. Uh, make sure you're opening the actual file in your text editor, Daniel. And then you just start typing. You don't really need to do anything else. <laughs> Miss Turner done? No way. No way. That was like three minutes? Well done if you are done. That's awesome. Ninja done? What? How? What? Are you, what? Huh? Uh, Gordius, there's no image. Feel free to use any brownie image you would like. Wow, these folks got done quick. We got Miss Turner with the first done. Ninja, Murray, Luck Monkey, Karma, Erica. I'm noticing a theme here. I'm noticing some individuals that were here for the five week boot camp. They're, uh, they're, they're, they, they got this on lock, which is great to see. Got that active recall in this, a uh, little bit of spaced repetition for the day. <laughs> well done, everyone. Keep going. If you're new, don't be, don't be intimidated by the folks that have been around here for a little while. They're showing out, but, uh, you'll be there soon too. I did give it on day one. Yeah. We never got to it, but it was there.
If you finished early, grab a stretch, grab some water, hydrate, kiss your loved ones, order some dominoes, do what you gotta do. Ghost bottle. <laughs> Code Monkey, I wonder why this guy is doing it for free. Because I want to. This is my activism. I want folks to have a, a good shot at a good career. All right, folks, keep going. Keep going. Dig deep, push, push forward, and we're going to go over it together. So we've got about three minutes, 20 seconds left. We're going to go over it together. We're going to learn some other great tags. We'll take a break. We'll introduce another lab and we'll call it for the evening. Oh, I like that ninja. Trust in yourself. There we go. Frang, no need to update, upload it anywhere. This is for you right now. He's going to steal our souls to feed his immortality. <laughs> what? On V with the posture check. Thank you. All right. Hold on. Sit up right. Get my life together here. Whew. There we go. Crumb hustler. Yeah, I like the lo fi too. Keep going, everyone. Two minutes, 20 seconds left. Will companies care if you use VS code compared to Atom? Not really. Sometimes at some companies they ask everyone to use the same editor just because they have like developer licenses or developer computers that they give you and they want you to use that specific setup or plugins or something like that. But mm, a lot of companies just don't care. Also, like your your text editor becomes an extension of you as a software engineer, and so it's very personal decision. The the you 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 start to learn all the shortcuts, you learn all the plugins, you learn how to use it, and it's really hard to switch off of one editor to another. All right. What do you feel about us working on mini projects for learning similar to this lab, but on our own? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna give you a lot of those projects for homework. I'm gonna give you a lot of project-based learning as we kind of progress. Like I, like I said, ease into it, folks. Don't pile too much stuff on you in the beginning. Let's ease into it. Let's ramp up together and trust me, we'll be cooking later on. We'll have a lot to do. Lots of project-based learning coming our way. Mitch done, nice. Alrighty, folks. Oh, cross with the done. Nice. Oh, Rossi, why is the screen blurry? We still don't have quality options all the time. Um, I'm hoping now that our numbers are up, we'll be able to apply for partner and everyone will get the quality options. Um, but yeah, sometimes we don't get the quality options. Ooh, a lot of folks coming in done right at the buzzer. Oh, okay. Well, you got quality settings. That's cool. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't always give them to us, which is interesting because we're st we're just affiliates still. And so we get we get them more than folks that aren't affiliate, but we don't always get them if there are a lot of partners streaming. All right. Let's go, folks. Come on back. Come on back. Let's go over this together. Well done. You worked hard. Some of you were able to finish. That was cool. If you didn't finish, no worries. This is your this is this is day two. All right? Day two. Don't 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 feel bad about yourself if you weren't able to kind of get further along. We're gonna go over it together. Remember, we're gonna we're gonna ramp up, folks. We're easing in. All right. Now, here's the interesting thing. Do I care about how any of this looks? Do I need to, to open this in the browser at all? 
not really. I don't care how it looks, so I would open it in the browser. I could if I just wanted, if I was curious. But uh, I'm not writing any CSS, so what do I care what it looks like? I'm choosing my HTML tags based on what, chat? I'm choosing my tags based on what? What two things? Chat, what am I choosing my tags based on? Importance and semantic meaning. Nice. Yes. I love it. I love when I see a wall of the right answers. Yes. I am choosing <laughs> dice roll or card draw. <laughs> Drake, that's hilarious. Yeah, based on importance and semantic meaning. So let's go ahead and work through our content, picking our tags based on semantic meaning and importance. Now, this brownies JPG is gonna be an interesting tag. Why are images an interesting tag? Why are images an interesting tag that we see here? Ooh, they're self-closing. Look, because I'm at the end, I'm not gonna close it and do another tag. I'm just gonna do a right carrot and end. That's it. They're self-closing because they're already content. It's already content themselves. They're not wrapping around text or other content. The image is the content. But we'll notice that images need a source attribute. Remember, these are called attribute value pairs. And so the source is needed to know what image to load, right? Without knowing what image to load, we're gonna have a, a, nothing that loads. Right now, I don't have this brownies.jpg, right? I don't have this brownies.jpg, so I'm actually gonna get an error if I try to open this. There's one other thing that images should always have. What's that one other thing that uh, you should always have? <laughs> what? An alt, nice, yeah, you should always have an alt. So an alt is um, brownies. There we go. So the alt is stands for alternative text, and it's going to be what shows up for actually all three of our users. Right now, all three kinds of our users. Right now, I don't have a brownies.jpg image. So this is gonna break. And individuals that go to my site, they're gonna see the alt text that says brownies. So even though the image won't load because there's no image that I have yet, they'll still be able to see that it was supposed to be brownies. An individual that's coming that's using assist accessibility device, like a screen reader, they might have a visual impairment that stops them from being able to see the brownies image. And so the screen reader will read the alternative text to them. And then Google, before they had all their fancy dancy machine learning, they needed to know what the image was about. So they might have looked at the alternative text to figure out what the image was about. So whenever you have an image, you should always, always hard rule have an alt tag. <laughs> Brownies is a strange word. I've been staring at it for too long. Hilarious. Uh, next to this, we have something called a comment. Notice how it's grayed out in my text editor, right? It's grayed out uh, and it's, it's called a comment. What this means is that the browser won't try to read this, right? The browser won't try to read this. And it's just like a note for ourselves and other developers, right? So you can use comments to leave notes to yourself or to other developers. Uh, and in most text editors, you can normally just highlight your text and do something like command forward slash or control forward slash, and it should make it a comment. HTML has a specific way that you make comments. It's a left caret. We call exclamation points bangs, and then hyphen hyphen, the stuff that you don't want to be read, and then hyphen hyphen right caret. Anything that goes in between this and this will turn into a comment. All right, line five, recipe by Biz McMahon. All right, this is this is always gonna be a contentious one. Chat, what did you feel like this was? What tag did you go with for this one? To me, it's definitely a heading. It definitely describes the content that comes after. Ooh, this is interesting. 
See a lot of H2s. All right. Is the person who made the recipe important to you? Like, do you go to a recipe website and you go, oh, Biz made this? I'm out. I, I, no way. I'm never cooking anything by Biz. Nah, I don't care. I don't think I've ever looked at the person who made the recipe and been like, yes, this this is important information to me. Right? But you might be, <laughs> Diabolical said Guy Fieri, you might be a Guy Fieri household. You might only cook recipes by Guy Fieri, right? And if it's not a Guy recipe, you're out, right? So to you, that might be really important information, right? I heard he's like a really great guy, does like a lot of charity work and stuff. Shout out Guy Fieri. What's up? How you doing? Um, so to me, this is, this is definitely describes the rest of the content, but it's not important. So I would do something like an H4 here. Right, it, it's, it's definitely a heading. It describes what comes after everything, right? But it's not super important to me. Now, like I said, we're gonna come back to some of our HTML and we're gonna learn about accessibility. And accessibility does have some concerns about the ordering of your heading elements. But for now, let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's bring it to Flavortown and uh, keep it as an H4, all right. How about related recipes? Are related recipes an important bit of information? Like if you come to a website and you don't like what you see, you might go to like a different related recipe, right? So it's definitely an article. I mean, sorry, definitely a heading. What are y'all feeling, chat? H3, I'm seeing H3, I'm seeing H2. I'll go with chat. I can I can see it being H. I can see it being H two. I can also see being H three. I'll go with what chat is saying here, and we'll, we'll do H three opens, whoop, and we'll do H three closes. So we're gonna always kind of jump to the end. The way I'm jumping, like if you see this, like I'm jumping left and right. The way I'm doing that jumping is on Mac. I can hold down Command and hit the right arrow. On PC, there's a different key. I believe it's the the start and end key or your page up page down key uh, and that'll help you jump to the end and then i'm always just going to go ahead and close it like that cool so these are related recipes now all of these are different recipes so to me these are all going to be the same and they're all going to be in a list home and end keys on pc yeah so you can hold down home and end and they'll jump you to the line thank you so let's go ahead and do UL opens because it's it's an unordered list. Like they just these 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 other recipes don't need to be in a specific order, so it's an unordered list. I'm gonna grab all this stuff that's here. I'm gonna put it inside of my UL, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do that trick. I'm gonna hold down Command. You can do Control if you're on PC or GNU Linux, and wherever I click, I get this lovely REPL, and then I'm gonna do my LI. And then I'm also gonna do an anchor tag because these are links. These are links to other recipes. And so I'm gonna do a placeholder, which is an Octothorpe. So that's my Octothorpe placeholder <laughs> for those that are playing, uh, playing bingo. And then I'm gonna to jump to the end. I'm gonna close this anchor tag and I am going to close this LI. Now I know that's a lot. If you're new, I, that was that was a lot of stuff here. So I definitely knew that it was a list. It was a list of recipes. So that's why I needed the UL that opened and closed. Each line was a different recipe. So each line was definitely gonna be an LI, okay? So each line was definitely gonna be an LI. But I think these are all like links. Like I got to click this recipe to go to it, right? If I click on Chewish Brownies, it's going to take me somewhere else, right? And so I want it, my UL to open and close. And then I want it, my LI to have an anchor tag inside of it. And so that is why you're seeing this structure. The way I did it is I just held down command 
and I clicked everywhere. I'm on Mac, so I held down Command and I clicked everywhere. If you're on PC or GNU Linux, you would hold down Control and click at the beginning of each line. And then that's how I'm jumping back and forth. That's how I'm able to do it all at one time. Yeah. Pound symbol is just a is a placeholder, and we call it an octothorpe. The octothorpe is like the real name for it in programming. Uh, so it's just a placeholder. It's something that the browser will ignore until we can put the actual URL in. Ah, on PC, it's actually Alt. So you're going to hold down Alt and click on PC. Nice. A lot of these, like, these shortcuts are going to be very dependent on the operating system, the program you're using. So I'll try my best to like recall the ones, but I, I don't use uh, Windows professionally. And so thank you for uh, giving me the correct ones in chat. I'll always repeat them uh, in chat. Cool. All right, let's look at some stuff down here. Prep time. Is that important, folks? What do you think? What are you feeling here? It's definitely a heading. Definitely describes this content here. But uh, prep time, what do you think? I think prep time is really important to me. At least to me, I think it's really important. I think knowing how much I'm making and how long it's going to take is super important to me. Um, so I'm feeling either H2 for these or H3. I think chat's going with H3. I'm fine with H3s for these. I think if, if chat wasn't here to influence me, I might go H2, but I can see an H3. And then 60 minutes, what are we, what are we gonna what are we gonna call this? <laughs> span. Yeah, let's do a span here, chat. Cool. And servings, I think, are kind of equally important as prep time. So I'll do an H3 for the servings as well. And do another span for the number nine here. Uh, and don't worry if you're like frantically trying to like type along, I will share the entire solution on Discord once class is over. All right. Ingredients, important? I think so. I think ingredients are super, super important. Uh, and so I am going to make the ingredients in H2. Definitely think H2 all day long for me. I don't think I would um, kind of, I don't think I would choose anything else. What the heck? Cool. Uh, then the list of ingredients, like you can't even say, you can't even say it. Uh, <laughs> who cares what ingredients are in their brownies? <laughs> I do because I have to go shopping for them or else I'm not making any brownies, right? Um, does it matter the order of the ingredients chat? Does it matter if I put cocoa powder above flour on the list? Nope. So since that doesn't matter, we know this is going to be what kind of list? Cool. UL. Uh, in my text editor, I can just hit tab and it'll auto complete for me. So I'm just going to go and plop this auto complete down at the bottom. And then our list always have what? Our list always have what? LIs, nice. <laughs> some folks, some folks are saying the order in which you go shopping for it, like in the store. Man, if you if you organize your grocery list based on like closest to you when you enter and like the aisles you're going to go down to get ingredients, man, you're on another level. That that's respect right there. I'll put I'll put some respect on your name if that's what you do. You plan it. You plan out your your trip through the grocery store. Man, kudos to you. All right, each of these are going to be an li. So I'm going to do that trick. Going to hold down command and click. For some of you that might be alt and clicking. Cool. Then I'm going to go ahead and do my li opens. Then I'm going to jump to the end. Do my li close. On Mac, you can do command in your arrow key. Uh, on PC, we found that you're doing uh, the home and end keys. All right, man, we're 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 powering through this, folks. Powering through this. 
Directions. Directions are probably another what? Another. It's another what? Very important. Another. Yeah. Another H2. Let's go ahead and do an H2 here, folks. H2 opens. H2 closes. Remember, this is this is new for for most of you. This is new. You're, it's about recognizing these patterns, right? If, if you didn't come up with the right pa pattern out the gate, don't worry. When we're done, actively recall the things that you learned. And next time you see these types of patterns, you'll know what tags to use, right? So you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna actively recall the things that we learned this evening. You're going to go ahead and add them to your space repetition. So don't worry about getting it right out the gate. Learn and then apply it the next time you see it. Okay. Uh, then we have another type of list. This time, the list are the directions. So, what kind of list is this going to be, chat? Ordered lists. All right. Ordered list. Let's go ahead and open. And always make sure you close your list. Boom. Close my list. Uh, each one of these is going to be a lovely list item, just like we saw before. So I'm going to hold down command and click. And I'm going to do my opening li. Uh, and But I'm not going to close it. I'm not going to do the, the trick to close it because some of these are in a different line. And so I'm just going to do my ending here as well. Cool. And then I'm going to close my my allies. All right. Let's keep going, folks. We're almost at the end. Good on you for sticking through. How about this special tip here? Is this tip important? Is this tip important? Oh, Will with the hydrate. Cheers to you. Thank you. Cheers. Eh, not really to me. Like I don't. I don't know. I don't think I ever read the. I don't think I read the tips. Like I don't think like I look at the ingredients and I look at the directions. And it's, I don't. I don't want like recipes nowadays always have some like like wild convoluted story about like why they make the recipe. It's always like uh, when I was younger, I would wake up on Christmas and my mom would make these cookies, but my dad hated them. But we always loved them, and that's why you got to make these cookies. Um, <laughs> Nox said with the whole anime backstory. Yeah, there's a whole anime backstory to why you got to make these these specific brownies. Uh, and so I, I don't pay attention to any of that. I'm, I'm going to say, <laughs> don't care. Give me a cookie. I love it. Um, I'm going to say H4, um, but we can fight afterwards if you want. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm going to say H4. Uh, and then this is just a block of text. So block of text, we always know. Block of text, paragraph, right? So opening and closing that block of text. Cool. Yeah, it's for SEO. The reason why they do that is because recipes, I think like recipes aren't like copyrightable apparently. Like you can't copyright a recipe but you can copyright the whole anime backstory. And so somebody can't copy your anime backstory, um, but they can copy the recipe. And so that's why they do it. That and SEO. KFC would like a word. What? All right. Nutritional info. Psh. Psh. <laughs> Nutritional info. <laughs> Is there an H8? There's no H8. It's H6. All right, H6. Don't at me. Don't at me about this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, come on, we gotta be really. <laughs> Fuck it. We're keeping it a six. I don't care if it's right or wrong. Uh, and then calories, we'll, we'll do our span as well. All right. I literally put hashtag Domino's Pizza on the check-in tweet today. You think I care about nutritional info? All right. <laughs> I 
think of the children? <laughs> Comment it out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> That's such a good idea. <laughs> Boom, we're going to comment it out. Command forward slash. Boom, it's a comment. It's not even on the page anymore. Dragonoid, thank you for the hydrate. <laughs> Cheers to you. All right. Find this recipe. Sorry, it's behind my head. Let me um, give you some room here. Find this recipe. I think find this recipe is... Um, I have 15 more viewers than Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> That's wild. No way. Um, <laughs> why is Bernie streaming? Uh, all right. So we have this. This to me is a full sentence. And so I could see somebody argue for a span here. Um, but I think this is a full sentence. I'm going to do a paragraph. And then inside of this paragraph. Let's raid Bernie. <laughs> oh, I just got put on a list. I can't say that. <laughs> we can't we, no, stop saying raid Bernie. No, <laughs> we just all got put on a very special list for saying that. <laughs> Please don't say that. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead. Find this recipe here. What does here sound like, chat? What is What does here sound like? Yeah, it's a link. And so we're going to we're going to wrap this in an anchor tag cuz the anchor tag is how we do our links. A opens and then I'm going to do my A close. And then remember, our our anchor tags need the that superpower that that href and chat, what are hrefs? What is href? There's a special name for href all source. These are all called what? Yeah, they're called attributes. They're called attributes. Is there a reason why we can use both span and p tags? P tags are just for larger blocks of text. Spans are for short pieces of text. That's kind of the major difference. Uh, so we're just going to take this link that's here, and we're going to make that the href attribute. Boom. 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 There we go. All right, folks. Uh, if you followed along and you wrote some code, you're you're an engineer. You're you're a software engineer now. You're it. You did it. You wrote code. That's the barrier to entry. You wrote code. Give yourself a round of applause. You did it. You done did good. Well done. You can you can add it to your LinkedIn now. <laughs> One job, please. <laughs> You're ready. You don't need me anymore. Go out there and get those jobs. We all did it. Good job, everyone. All right. If you are following along and you, you, you want the way I wrote my code here, uh, I will share this full uh, solution on Discord right after class. So uh, after class, you can come back uh, and I'll have the solution for you to, to take a look at and uh, you'll be good. Cool. Well done, everyone. Well done. All right. We are going to take a break. We've been going for a little over two hours. Let's uh, let's take a let's take a break. Let's put five minutes on the clock. Man, tonight is flying, folks. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you're having fun. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Uh, go ahead, use the restroom, hydrate, do what you got to do. I'm going to bring the tunes. Diz, thank you for the hydrate. Thank you. Alrighty. Can you also put a class on a spanner on a couple words? Yeah, you can use classes for the styling knocks. All right, folks, get up. If you're here, get up, leave, walk away, stretch, get water, come back in four minutes and 28 seconds. We got a lot more good stuff to cover, a lot more fun to be had. But for now, hydrate, go, move, get up, dance, do what you got to do. 
Uh, the name of the break song, I forget, it's, it's on the YouTube. If you go to the YouTube channel and you just, Leon, if you just do exclamation point YouTube and you look at any of the videos, the, the full credit for the, the, the songs there. <laughs> my laptop is asleep on my lap, can't move. <laughs> 3D, 3D, that's funny. Uh, Leon, I'm looking ahead at the homework and I'm wondering where we were supposed to get the images from. Uh, we're going to talk about two ways to get images. You can either use placeholders or you can just like go to Google image search and grab some images. <laughs> Hopper hopping in. Love it. Um, Diego, make sure you saved it. Make sure everything was saved and make sure you actually opened up the HTML file. Um, if it's not saved and it's not an actual HTML file, you won't get any of that coloring. Leon, would it make sense to wrap up related tags, like the related recipes links into a section container? Yes. If we were doing this and it was a, a real site, we'd definitely use some sort of sections or some containing elements for sure. Uh, when you do the homework this weekend, I'm going to ask you to use sections and things like that. <laughs> All right, there we go. Good day by low frequency music. I got to add that as a night bot command from people ask. Mayan said, should we read the entire Shea Hal book for next Thursday? The entire basics, yes. There's also like an advanced section, um, but you want to read just the basics. Do you have any stories from your baby software engineering days? Um, I guess I, mean, I got a lot of war stories, I think, but I, I have a lot of happy moments. I have a lot of things I'm really proud that I developed. Good companies, fun products. I think maybe we'll do like a, maybe like a community goal one day for like all the stuff that I've built that I'm proud of or something like that. So you can see like my progression from like, like my Dragon Ball Z fan site days to like now. <laughs> Lit Bunny, we are on day two of this boot camp. So welcome. Pull up a chair. Jeezy, that alt click for typing multiple lines blew my mind. Cheers. <laughs> and thanks for the hydrate, Jeezy. Donnie Durden said so much to learn. Yup. Uh, Diego, you hit up the help channel on Discord. We'll, somebody will be able to help you figure it out. I'll be hanging out there uh, today after class and tomorrow. So go ahead and share your screen and stuff like that there. And somebody will be able to help you. Alrighty, folks. About a minute left. Enjoy your break. If you didn't get up or stretch, go ahead and do it. What Josh Wunsch says, can you walk through when to use a span tag again? Span tag is just for a short piece of text, like less than a sentence. Any thoughts on a break timer? Mm, I think a lot of people like like a, like a Pomodoro timer. A lot of people use forest. Like you plant a tree, and the more you focus, the more like you plant a tree. Neject said, "Having a blast." Yeah, hey, thanks for showing up. Thanks for being here. Chris on the Discord channel is where I'll be hanging out. Shamir, uh, I'll post where to, to send the homework when it's due. So next Thursday at the beginning of class, I'll tell you where to submit everything. Alrighty, folks. Come on back. Come on back. Got a little bit more fun to have. Come on back. Come on back. If you're having trouble finding channels on Discord, make sure you agree to the rules. You won't see all the uh, you won't see all the channels until you agree to the rules. All right, folks, come on back. Let's let's finish this up. We got a few more things to talk through. Uh, then we're going to introduce the homework in the lab, and then we'll we'll end our fun time for the evening. All right. Can Hamilton submit homework? Yes, please go ahead and submit it as Hamilton. 
going to have a lot of auto grading and fun stuff. So you'll get some feedback and I'll always share the solutions. So you can always compare your code to the solutions. All righty, let's do this. Let's talk about some structure folks, some structure to our HTML. Uh, here is how most of your H well, this is how your HTML documents should be formatted. You're going to have at the top of your file, a doc type. And then you're going to have an element that opens and closes called the HTML element. This is like the root element. Everything is going to go inside of the HTML element. Okay. And then there are two primary parent elements that hold everything inside of the HTML element. We have the head and the body. The head is all the stuff that the browser needs. Like what type of fonts will I need? Uh, where should I go get the CSS? Like all the stuff that your browser is going to need to help render your content goes in the head. Everything that the user sees and interacts with your headers, your headings, your paragraphs, your spans, all the tags we just learned about, they're all going to go inside of the body <laughs> and peanut already knows the joke. So the way I remember this, right? And I really want this to marinate into your brain. The way I remember this is you can't see what's going on inside my head, right? You can't see what's going on inside my head, right? But you can see this sexy body, right? You can see the sexy body, but you can't see what's going on inside my head. So the head is all the stuff that you don't really see, the things that the browser needs to do its job. But if you're able to see something in the browser, you're able to see some text, some content, that all goes inside the body. All goes inside the body, okay? So everything we just did, if we were to go ahead and go back to our code, right? All of this, every single thing here should be inside of the body. <laughs> People got some bingo, diabolical, you got your bingo, nice. So there's a really cool trick that you can use. If you go to the top of an HTML file, it has to be saved as an HTML file. If I type HTML and hit tab, it auto magically creates everything for us, right? All I did, let me go ahead and do that again. I'm gonna do it again. I just typed HTML and then I hit tab. And it auto magically created it for you, All right? Now what I would do is I would take all the stuff we just did, cut it, so Command or Control X, and then paste it inside of the body. All right? And you're gonna start to notice that I'm indenting some stuff. All the stuff that I just put inside the body is tabbed over one space. We're gonna get into the a lot more of why this is, but for now, you just wanna understand that there is something called parent-child relationships. Whenever you have content inside of other content, you're creating a relationship. And so you gotta put some respect on the parent's name and give it a little indent, right? And so the parent, which is the body that's holding everything, all the content that's inside of it gets tabbed over a space. <laughs> so I've been working on a hip hop scavenger hunt where it's a series of progressively hard challenges related to rap and hip hop. And uh, one of them is just a picture of Birdman and the text that says respect. And you have to drag respect onto Birdman's name. Actually, I wonder if I can open that real quick. Hold on, let me see if I have it on my desktop. Uh, sorry, I, this is a tangent, but I think it's funny if you can, if I can show it to y'all. Hold on, let's see. All right. So here it is. Like, what do you do? How do you how do you get past this puzzle? I don't know. Oh, maybe drag respect onto his name. There you go. That's how you do it, folks. <laughs> 
this this is this is this is what I this is this is what I spend my time on. Just so you know, when you're like Leon's not on Discord, where is he? I'm doing this. This is what I'm doing. Uh, let me show you some other ones. I know this is a tangent, but this is a fun one. Uh, so here's Chief Keef. Uh, so for this one, you you got to know all the things that he doesn't like. And so you got to know the song. And so if you don't know which things he doesn't like, you, you, you can't get it right. And once you pick all the things that he doesn't like, you move on to the next round. <laughs> uh, let's see if you all can figure out this one. Oh, this isn't the right one. Hold on. Is this it? Here we go. I kind of gave away this one. Which one would you click on? Which one would you click on? Well, if you know, this is a screenshot. This is a screenshot from... Uh, the lyrical lemonade video uh, with Blueface in it, and uh, so you have to go ahead and click uh, Blueface Baby. <laughs> Blueface Baby. Uh, so that's that one. Uh, <laughs> and then I'll show I'll show one more, and then we'll get back to it. I'll show one more, and we'll get back to it. I'm I'm revealing too much. I'm putting um. I'm putting uh, an Amazon gift card behind this. I have 10 of them that I'm doing and to progress through each one, you have to, um, you got to know what you're doing at the end. There's a hundred dollar gift card. Uh, so this one is a weird one. Let me make this bigger. Anybody know how you would solve this one? Anybody know how you would solve this one? <laughs> <laughs> Put him in jail. Uh, so this is six nine. If you didn't remember his his streetwear days before he became six nine, uh, and so what you have to do is you have to pick the colors of his rainbow grill. So you pick a color, and then you click the teeth, and it colors the the teeth in that color. And uh, once you get all the colors correct, it takes you on to the next one. Uh, so that was that was that was one. This was before it all went down. I was I've been working on this for a while. So this this is this is like old. Um, this one won't make it into the final one for obvious reasons, but this is what I spend my days on folks. Just so you know. All right, back to it, <laughs> back to it, back to it. All right. So this is the structure. <laughs> How do I come back from that? All right, here's the structure. Um, remember you can't see what's going inside the head. You can see everything in the sexy body. Uh, and here we have a shortcut just by typing HTML and hitting tab, you get the structure for you. You put all your content inside of the body. All right. <laughs> I tell y'all you need to work on passion projects. I showed you some of mine. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Let's talk about some new tags. We're going to, we're going to introduce some new tags. I'm going to introduce the lab for homework and then we're going to end tonight. Um, while I have you all, remember, there's no office hours this Saturday because of Halloween. Normally, I like to do office hours every Saturday, but there won't be any this Saturday. And we won't have any class next Tuesday because of the U.S. election. So the next time I'll see you all will be next Thursday. Uh, and so you have all your homework that I'm expecting to get done between now and next Thursday. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about some new tags. talk about a nav tag. A lot of you in chat were, were mentioning a nav tag when we were looking at Khan Academy. With HTML5, we got this new tag called the nav. And the nav is for when you're going to have content that repeatedly shows up on the page. That's not just because you want it to show up, but it's, it's so that folks can move through your site effectively, right? So if we look at Khan Academy, this is their whoop, this is their nav. 
it enables you to navigate around the site and it's going to be at the top of every single page, right? Uh, for every page you go onto, their nav is going to be there and it's going to help you navigate. So we got a special tag with HTML5 uh, that enables us to make sure we have a semantically appropriate choice for our navigation. Now, the pattern for a nav tag is almost always the same. You're gonna have a nav that opens and closes, and then you're gonna have a list of links inside of it, right? So we saw this list idea, this list of links inside of the brownie recipe, but it's very common in your nav to have an unordered list, an LI, and then your anchor tags, right? There are other ways to do your nav sometimes, right? But, right, but you're going to see this is a pretty common pattern for your navigation. Is the nav a container? Yes, technically it would be a container. And yeah, uh, Dreamstar, yep, you would typically see like a header nav UL LI. You might even see like a footer nav UL LI, but it is a common pattern you're gonna see over and over again, so I wanted you to, uh, to see it. Let's keep going. So far we've seen tags that we show content to our users. Like it's all been about like showing content, showing content, showing content. But how do we get stuff from our users? Well, with HTML, we have a special set of tags that enable us to get stuff from our users. And yeah, some folks in chat got it already. Sheena, you got it. Our forms. Forms are a tag that we can use to get information. Okay, so here is the parent element or the containing element that is a form. Now you're gonna notice that this form tag opens and closes and it's gonna open and close just like a UL or an OL opens and closes. There's gonna be open and close and there's gonna be specific tags that go inside of a form that really only exist inside of a form. Shamir, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. Right, uh, So this is going to be a set of special tags that enable us to get information. You wouldn't really have an LI by itself. LIs are always going to be in OLs or ULs, and there are going to be some elements that really should only exist inside of a form. Now, we have another hydrate. All right. SHA-94, thank you. Cheers to you. Thank you for the hydrate. I definitely am going to need to go to the restroom soon. Uh, <laughs> uh, so here we have the form that opens and closes. And you're gonna notice that there are some special chat. What are these called? What is What are these called? Chat. What are they called? Yeah. We're gonna have some special attribute value pairs, right? We're gonna have some special attribute value pairs that are specifically for forms. I don't want you to worry about these special attributes for right now. When we get a little bit further along, we're gonna talk about what they're for. Um, but right now, just know that the form has some special attributes that enable it to do a few things. One, it enables it to describe how the data we're collecting might make its way to a server. And it also lets us know what might happen after somebody submits a form. Like think about when you buy something online, right? You click submit on the form and it like takes you to a confirmation page or like a thank you page. That's kind of what the action, that's what the action can be used for. It's so like redirect you when you're done. And the method of like post and all that stuff is kind of just how like how data is gonna go. But for right now, let's not get into the weeds with that. Let's just know that a form is the parent element that's gonna enable us to collect data, okay? And inside that form, we're gonna have inputs. And with HTML5, we got a lot of different types of inputs. We got text, password, tell, email, button. And so let me show you what this form and these inputs, uh, how they how they work. So let's go ahead and go here. I'm gonna go ahead and just, just this is not correct. I'm just showing you a form. So I'm gonna do a form. Don't worry about any of these attributes for right now. When we get a little bit further along, we'll worry about them. And let's do an input. Let's do a type text. Let's do an input type tell, and I'm just using the auto completing. I'm just hitting tab and letting it auto complete. And then let's do a email. Cool, I'm gonna save this. And then I am going to open this in my browser. 
So I'm going to do it the old fashioned way, which is I am going to find my folder. I am going to find this HTML file in the folder, right? And I am going to drag this file to my browser. And there you go, it opened it up in the browser. Just by dragging that file onto the browser, it opened. Now something we're gonna notice is that here is my form with the three inputs. Let me type some text in here. All right, so we have a form, we have three inputs, all right? I have a form, I have three inputs, one is type text, one is type tell, and one is type email. Yet they all rendered exactly the same. So why with HTML5 did we make such a big deal about having these different types, right? Something fundamentally changed about the way that we consume the web, something fundamentally changed, something fundamentally changed, something really big happened about how we use the web, something big happened, something changed the way that we, yeah, mobile phones, mobile phones came and dominated. They took over how most folks consume the web. And so when you're on a mobile phone, you need different keyboards. So these types actually will pull up different keyboards on your mobile device. So if you're on a type tell, it will help pull up the number pad on your device. If you are on type email, it might pull up a special keyboard that has an at sign or your email provider. Right, So these types actually gave a little bit more control when you think about your, your apps being run on mobile devices on mobile browsers. Cool. So we have our form, we have our inputs. There's one other really important thing I wanna show you about forms right now. We're gonna go, we're gonna have a way more in depth class on forms. Once we learn a little bit of JavaScript, we're gonna come back and really learn how to build forms. But there's one important thing I wanna show you real quick. Tell is short for telephone, that's what it is. And I'm gonna do it a label here. And I'm gonna give it the, the, lab, the four of zebra. You're gonna see me use zebra a lot. The reason why I use zebra is because there's nothing built into HTML CSS or JavaScript called Zebra. It's just not, it's not a thing. And so I use it as a, as a placeholder a lot. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a four of a Zebra and, and don't worry about these different attributes. I'm just wanna show you something cool. We're gonna have way more time to get deeper into the weeds of this stuff. So what I do here is I have a label that has a four of Zebra. And let's go ahead and say like first name. I have a label of first name, and this label is tied to this input because the for and the ID are the same, okay? Don't worry about having to do this. I'm just showing you something cool, all right? So the label and the input are tied because of the for and the ID. Let me show you what happens. Let's go back to the browser real quick. Let me refresh. Here we have a first name, okay? I'm gonna click on first name in three seconds. Three, two, one. Did you catch what just happened? Did you see what just happened? Chat, what just, what just happened? Let me, let me refresh. Three, two, one. What happened? Why was that label there? Yeah. When I clicked the label, it auto-focused into this input automatically. Why might this be really important? Why might having the ability to like click on a label and it focus on an input be important. Yeah, for accessibility, right? <laughs> Fat fingers. <laughs> accessibility. If I am using a screen reader, 
I will be able to read that label and tap, right? And when I tap, it'll autofocus into where I can type my text. Uh, so there are a lot of these things that we're gonna learn inside of our HTML. They're gonna come back for accessibility reasons. So we're gonna have a whole class on accessibility. It's super important, both for moral and greedy reasons. And so we're gonna have a whole class on it. But I want to show you that because it's, it's pretty cool. Tyus, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. So remember, when we're building out these forms, we use different types, right? To get the different types of keyboards and we can use labels to help us autofocus. I'm gonna share a video that shows somebody using accessibility, accessibility devices on the web so you can kind of see all this in action. I'll share that on Discord after class. All right, let's keep pushing. Uh, also, if you wanna see the full list of all the new input types that came with HTML5, the MDN has a wonderful full list, okay? So if you're, you're curious what we have, go ahead and look at that full list. All right, we kind of already did this. We just coded that simple form, so we're gonna keep pushing. All right, here is uh, the second most important thing that we're gonna talk about tonight. The first was always separation of concerns. Here's the second most important thing. Something I really want you to, to, to think about and to, to have in the back of your mind when you're building out these, these websites. There is a best practice called progressive enhancement. And the idea behind progressive enhancement is that you're going to have the focus of your website be the content, the HTML. That should be the, the rich peanut center of your peanut M&M, right? So the bulk of your stuff should be the content. Then you're gonna wrap a chocolatey, a very like little chocolatey coding around that content, which is your presentation or your CSS. And then a thin candy coding that is JavaScript. So the bulk of your website should be HTML. You're gonna wrap that HTML in a little bit of, of candy chocolate, sorry, a little bit of chocolate coding, and then a thin candy coding. And what this is meant to represent is that you want the bulk of your site to be the HTML. You want a little bit of CSS and an even smaller amount of JavaScript. And that's because the more that you add, the larger your site becomes, the heavier it becomes, and the longer it takes to download. There are a lot of big companies that are actually offering light versions of their site. So let's go ahead and look at CNN's light. This is light.cnn.com. So this is all of CNN, but everything's removed except for the HTML and a smidge of CSS, right? And so the beauty of this is that this is gonna load super fast, like super fast. There is no heavy CSS, there's no heavy JavaScript. It's just HTML, just that content, just that core, the peanut, right? And the reason why this is important, when I was doing research for building out these slides, I did some research and I, and I looked up the some of the recent numbers I could find. According to the uh, Department of Commerce, the United States Department of Commerce, 22 million, roughly 35% of our nation's rural residents had lacked access to broadband. So in 2017, there were 35% of the nation's rural residents, 22 million Americans that didn't have broadband. So if you're including really fancy JavaScript, really heavy images and, and all this stuff that's not just the core of your site, you're gonna have a lot of folks that just can't view your content, right? A lot of folks that just aren't gonna be able to access your content. And this doesn't go just for in the US, this goes across the world too. There are so many folks that are getting connected to the internet that still don't have high-speed broadband that wanna enjoy your content, right? And they can't because they don't have broadband access. In 2000, 2015, so just like five years ago, in 2015, I found this fact too, there were still 2 million, 2 million AOL dial-up subscribers. So just five years ago, there were 2 million AOL dial-up subscribers. 2 million. 
I froze for a second. Yeah, we don't always have, uh, we don't always, <laughs> it's funny that I talk about progressive enhancement and we freeze, <laughs> right? This was, I planned this. I planned this. this. This was built, this was to demonstrate that if you're on a website that's using a lot of, a lot of resources, you might not be able to enjoy the content, right? So yeah, in 2015, 2 million AOL dial-up subscribers. What blew my mind? So I like this example. There's this website. I apologize for all the cursing. Uh, it's called motherfuckingwebsite.com. This is a motherfucking website. Seriously, what else the fuck do you want, right? It has everything. It's lightweight. It's responsive. It fucking works. Look at this website. Look at it. You've never seen one before, right? So this works. This is progressive enhancement in action, right? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Jay Watt said, Leon, that guy is five year old is watching. Oh my God. they're like, Leon's on. And I'm just this is I'm just cursing a storm up. I apologize. Cursing is not good, little ones. Please, please don't curse like me. Um <laughs> We need like a Leon after dark, right? Like we, <laughs> at the end of stream, we do like a Leon after dark and we can, we, we like turn down the lights and stuff. Um, <laughs> so I like, this. this is an example of progressive enhancement in action, right? Like it's, it's, it's a great website. It's easy to read. It's lightweight. It's super fast, right? What else more do you need? So that's, that's something I like to show as a funny example. <laughs> forgot about the kids. All right. We're going to move to, we're at 241. We're almost at that three hour mark. I always like to end before the three hour mark. Um, we've kind of already walked through a website earlier that was Khan Academy. For homework, you're going to build the BBC. You're going to build the BBC and uh, all of the HTML that we call above the fold. So like what you see on the screen now is what you are building for homework, right? So what you see on the screen now is what you're building for homework. No CSS. Oh, did I miss a, did I miss a hydrate? I'm sorry. Surfan512, thank you for the hydrations. Cheers. Ah, that was a good one. All right. So for homework, you're building out this BBC website, okay? No CSS, no JavaScript, just the HTML, okay? I'm gonna say that one more time for the folks in the back. No CSS, just the HTML. Cool. So real quickly, let's look at the highlights here. Uh, chat, what would this be at the beginning of our document? The black bar, what would that be? Chat, what would that be? Yeah, a header with probably a nav in it. So a header with a nav. And you can use that nav structure from the slides earlier. So a header with a nav. How about this kind of white content area here? What would that be? Chat, what would that be? Section, nice. You might have some, some heading elements maybe. Maybe some more sections. Um, one thing that you're going to see down here, that's a little bit easier. We probably have like another section down here, some images inside of those sections, right? Maybe another heading here, right? And then something that's going to be a little interesting is that these here are sections, not images. Those images that you see are actually backgrounds, right? They're backgrounds. Those are backgrounds that'll be handled via CSS. So yeah, you're gonna count those as sections with content inside of them and not images. So I just wanted to, to give a quick overview of it because this is what you're gonna build for homework, okay? So you're gonna come back and you're gonna build this for homework. All right. <laughs> no Flexbox. No CSS yet, just HTML. 
All right. So uh, when I first ran this course, unfortunately, uh, my 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 dog Cheeky's passed away. Uh, so I didn't have the heart to remove and put the uh, designer gift that we normally use. So Cheeky's is going to stay here. Uh, and for all my slides going forward, she'll always stay here. Uh, so your homework. In addition to the homework that you've done previously or that you started, hopefully previously, this means the reading, sorry, the watching the two Ali Abdal videos, right? So you are going to watch the video on spaced repetition. You're going to watch the video on active recall, right? You are then going to work through the learning how to learn Coursera course. Please complete the entire course by Thursday. You don't have to do the optional stuff and you don't have to do the essays. Okay. You don't have to do the optional stuff and you don't have to do the essays. Okay. Now, in addition to that also being due on Thursday, right? In addition to that also being due on Thursday, you now have to read through learn.shayhow, all of the basic HTML and CSS, and then you're gonna code the BBC website. Just what we see here, just above the fold, right? Just above the fold. If you need an image, there's an image as well, but that's, that's all you need, okay? So you're watching two videos. You are, you are watching two videos. You're doing one course. You are reading another thing, Shay Hao, and you are, uh, you are, <clears throat> you are, finishing the BBC website. All right. Whew. It's been a lot of fun hanging out with y'all tonight. We're going to get ready to do a raid. Remember, I just paused. I, I just couldn't remember the last thing. I just forgot it and I paused. There was no glitching. I didn't stop. I just forgot. Um, I'm going to do a raid. Remember, if you raid, you get more channel points and we love those sweet, sweet channel points. Um, we have a lot of work to do this weekend, right? There's no stream on Saturday. There's no stream on Tuesday. If you're in the US, please vote on Tuesday if you haven't already voted, okay? Um, we always do a raid. We wanna send some love and positivity to somebody that, that's uh, in our category that doesn't have as many viewers. So we're not, we're not, we're not going to raid birdie. We're going to raid. We're always going to raid somebody in our category. Um, as much as I want to raid, when I want to raid Bernie, um, please take care of yourself this weekend. Right. Please take care of yourself this weekend. Right. There's a lot of reading. There's a lot of studying. There's a lot of stuff to do. Please take care of yourself. Please hydrate, please stretch, be consistent. All right, come ready on Thursday to have more fun, to build some more stuff, all right? And so, hey, it's been great. Have a safe Halloween. See you all on Thursday. Let's go ahead and do a raid. One week down, yeah, let's one week down. Let's get, let's get a little hype. Let's get, some, let's get some micro Leons in the chat. We got one week down. Congrats to all of you for sticking it out. Congrats for being here. Congrats for putting in a hard three hours uh, I respect the hell out of everyone that's here. Uh, let's go ahead and do a raid. So I'm going to queue it up right now. We have some folks that are building a, a, a game. Let's go ahead and, and uh, send them some love. So as always with the raids, send them some good vibes. Give them some follows. Send them some positivity. Let them know where you came from. Uh, starting it in 10 seconds. So I'll see you all over there. Have a great weekend. See you all on Thursday. Peace, everyone. See you over there.